have the guest speakers on shortly, but I'm going to pretty much introduce the author of Behold a Pale Horse and William Cooper, and then go into the background of him. A couple of other key component, I would say, figures that he speaks about, because everything's going to come back around full circle, and then I'll pass it off to you, Blanche, and then Blanche will pass it off to Layla, and then we'll get the speakers in. So what the live is, is called Pale Horse, and it's based around Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. He was born in 1943 in the 40s. He died in 2001 after 9-11, which he is, is something that he predicted. But it's not even, I wouldn't even really say he predicted it. He just knew it was going to happen. He knew it was going to happen. He knew who they were going to blame for it. He knew what we were really, like, why this was really going to occur. So all that is important information and factors. He served in the U.S. Navy, the Air Force, and Naval Intelligence until he was discharged in 1975. So he had some pretty good cred uh, credentials and some high clearance, which he obtained. He was also a radio broadcaster, which you could probably still find some of his stuff online, but it's going to be pretty difficult. So I want to say if you go on like Rumble, go on Bishoot, you could probably find some of that stuff. But a lot of it is going to be hidden, of course. We all know we all know why it would be. Behold a Pale Horse was published in 1991, which was the year I was born. So 31 years, basically. This book that he had put out and the knowledge he obtained years prior to that, all the stuff we're seeing right now has been planned and it's all put in this book. So I think that's going to be something that's probably a little difficult for people to digest because at the time that like he was talking about a lot of this, things were a lot different. You know, we didn't have the cell phones, we didn't have the computers and all that. But now we we're so accustomed to that that we're seeing everything in quote unquote like warp speed right now. So everything that he talked about then, we can really see in hindsight, like right now, like in 2020 vision, we see all this stuff that he uh, had wrote about in this book happening right now. And we'll get into all that. In July, I believe it was in 1998, uh, Bill Cooper was, he was convinced that he was targeted by Bill Clinton and the IRS. And so he was then charged with tax evasion and an arrest warrant was issued. So he eluded the federal authorities basically. And he, there was a lot of repeated attempts on it, like his life and also just to arrest him. On the 5th of November, 2001, there was Kashi County Sheriff's deputies because he lived in Arizona. He always said like Arizona was like, dangerous to like communists and socialists like that was the place to be freedom wise now we see that with like uh florida a lot but back then arizona was where he was at and so they attempted to arrest at his home and basically B bill cooper said he wasn't gonna be taken a lot so there was a shootout mm -hmm. bill cooper he shot i believe one deputy like in the head i'm not sure if it was fatal or not but there was gunfire exchange. Bill Cooper pretty much, that was the end of him. They successfully took him out. So there was a lot of theories. And I guess you could say theories because I don't know if there was any definitive proof, but there was a lot of theories that, you know, he was just targeted and they just wanted to take him out, period. So it wasn't like even, like an arrest was not going to occur. Like he was targeted to be assassinated, basically. So he died in November. 2001. So one of the things about Bill Cooper that's probably, I, I want to say a little overlooked because we don't pay attention too much to um, the background, just more so the information that's in the book. But with him being in the Naval Intelligence and all that, he had top secret Q level clearance. So what that meant was he had a SCI, which is sensitive compartment and information. So there's no blocks. He has full access and he had, he was able to see things that all the top like elites were able to see. He came across one project that was called magic M A J I C. And under that, he basically found out that UFOs were real and there was four types of uh, extraterrestrials 
that were visiting Earth, and they had like an agreement with the planet to exchange technology. Now, in this, we're not going to get really like into the UFO and extraterrestrial stuff. I don't think that's that relevant right now. But if you do pay attention to the news cycle, you see a lot of the UFO stuff out there, and they're trying to push it slowly but surely because, well, I'll get to it in a minute, but because that is a plan and it, a plot that they plan to push forward using the UFO stuff. And so I'm just curious, did you did you guys know about any of this so far? Um, I'd heard of a lot of his things, but until recently I didn't read it. But I heard of, like, I had read Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars and things, but I read it when I was younger and I didn't really understand what was what he was talking about until I, but now that I'm older, I understand like systems and games and things like that. Um, game theory. So it makes sense. <laughs> it's kind of, it's a little abstract for people if they don't understand those things. Once again, like we said, you know, around that time, we were barely being introduced to like computers, cell phones and electronics that were more advanced. So uh, to be able to fathom, and that's how they, how, that's how they do it is they, they work slowly. So, you know, you always hear that analogy of boiling a frog in, in hot water. You know, you have to do it slowly. You can't just turn it all the way hot because then they jump out. So that's how it's been for us is it's a slow condition over time to end up to a certain point. All these documents and stuff that he came across, he came across just all of this different stuff that's uh, based around like extraterrestrial stuff, along with the plans to usher in a new world order and agenda. And. Well, so one of the one of the ones that he did come across was called Project Red Light, which, by the way, if you guys look this up and I think like even on Google, you'll come across it. Like I look some I look some of this up and the information is there. A lot of this stuff isn't even like hidden at all. <laughs> they just don't expect you to look for it at all. So mm -hmm. Project Red Light was about testing extraterrestrial crap. So they had a bunch of these different like black projects they would do just to just revolving around like extraterrestrials alone. And then they had all these other uh, secret projects that they did, which of course, a lot of people are familiar with like MK Ultra and things like that. Uh, there's so much other stuff that they've had. So he had access to all these documents. And then if for anyone who is not privy on the book, all this information is pretty much in there. It's just like a whole layout. The, the same way that it's like he, he came across it, he's laying it out for you in the book. So, out of their manual, and I guess if you want to say they, you could say Illuminati, Deep State, you know, those players, they said that a world of people who do not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence, and thus their stakes on the table by choice and consent. And if I need to repeat that, I will, but I remember when, when we talked on our video call, guys, that I believe it was you, Blanche, who said that they use... They operate different. So, you know, it, it's more like in, in a spiritual sense. So they understand the universal laws. So when they go about doing their stuff, they tell you what they're doing. So that way they can eradicate the karma. So there, there's nothing that comes back negative on them if you choose to give up your freedom, if you choose to give your rights away. So that's what they're talking about. They're talking about how by your consent, you are literally giving away your rights and your freedom and so for them it's just like hey you gave it to me you know like what, what more do you want me to do so this is how they see the people obviously they use manipulation tactics propaganda which we'll get into but it's important to understand how they see you and how they view you they view you like you don't know shit because i mean technically we don't they hide everything from us but that's how they view us as humanity behold a pale horse that how that that title came to be was from the book of revelations in the bible so one of the things that bill cooper has said was that either these men or these people are following the book of revelations like a plan like a blueprint and bringing the prophecies to pass manipulating everybody basically to believing that this must come to pass because if it doesn't you're basically going against god so that's that's one 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 reason or one I would say practicality. 
He said, or there really is a God, and that what he said is, is going to happen, basically is going to happen. This scripture is in chapter 14, book of Revelations. And it's the fourth horse of the apocalypse, is the pale horse. So that's where he gets that from. So the scripture says this specifically. It says, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was death. And hell followed with them. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and hunger and with the beast of the earth. So what he means by that is where you get the wars from, where you get the famine from, where you get the, the diseases and all this and, and, and viruses and all this stuff from. So this is what they're, they're playing off of is that. So this is pretty much what we've been seeing and what we see now. So that's your AIDS and your HIV and your, you know, your COV virus, your Ebola, all the wars, cancer, cancer here is being suppressed. That's what all of that is. It's like order out of chaos in a sense. So one of the things also he kind of reiterated a lot in the book was how they were going to start to cull the population. So they fully intended to kill about 2 billion people, mainly I would say through, well, different, I would say different actions, but one of the main ones is that they can't go around and just assassinate people. So they have to implement certain, I would say, means of doing so, such as, as we've seen people getting injected by stuff and uh, the AIDS, uh, virus and, and pretty much everything is, is they've created. Everything they create is it's man-made. So they have their means of doing so of uh, population control. We see this with abortion as well, but we'll get into that when we talk about the silent weapons for quiet wars. But basically that is their goal. That's one of their main plans is to do just that, to call the, cop the, the population. Another thing he mentioned was that when they deem that enough people have been killed by these certain means that they use or that they plan to use, because I know they haven't used them all already, uh, they will release the cure for it. So we've saw, for an example, I put this in the clip that Joe Biden came out and said that if he gets elected, that he's going to cure cancer. So how do you figure that? Like, he's not lying. Because that is part of their plan. Their mm -hmm. plan is to release this stuff once they get they reach their goal, but they haven't reached their goal, which is why we keep seeing this destruction of not just the country, but globally. You know, we have the food shortages. You know how many people are probably going to die from that? Mm -hmm. So this is like we're literally in that stage, I feel like, where it's a calling. And we'll get into this as well when it comes to another form of the population control, which is the homosexual push, that agenda, and the destruction of the family, that agenda, it all is a form of population control and a means that they want to use in order to reach their goal. I believe in that clip too, he said that part of the, the process of this whole thing of when you get inoculated uh, by, and, and you get this cure or whatever that they want to put out, that you also be tracked. So it'll apparently stop AIDS, stop cancer, whatever, stop whatever it is that they, that's what they were doing with uh, C-19, C-19. So this is supposed to track and control people. Now we've heard the, I think he's the CEO, Borla, at the uh, World Economic Forum talking about ingesting something and being able to chemically control people and have implants. Like they talk about this stuff wide open and it's also been written down for such a long time. So it's not like this is new information. They just coming out and telling you. So, so now we have this whole plan to track and control people. Now I remember Bill Burr had a stand up years ago. I don't remember what year it might've been 2012, but he talks but he makes a joke about, Jason, I don't remember his name, Jason or Tommy or something, being uh, implanted with a chip, getting lost. And so the mom goes and runs and starts screaming his name. And then he comes, she, she pulls out this device and he comes running back. So he made a joke about that and was talking about how 
you know, they were implanting animals, planting dogs and stuff like this with these chips. And he said, pretty soon they're going to be doing it to us. Which, how he presented the joke was hilarious, but it was true because they have been doing that. They have been implanting animals with these uh, devices and tracking them. And so one of the things that Bill Cooper also mentioned was that they had these satellites in space, quote unquote. And, you know, they were being used to test out tracking the animals, the pets. So dogs, cats, whatever you're, you're implanting these animals with. And with that, with that being said, he said that it was only just a test run for what they were going to have planned for the people. So they, of course, we know, we see that now. I, I believe I put that in the clip as well, that there are people globally, okay, so places like Sweden, where people are getting implanted with these chips that has all this, this information and they can be trapped, uh, tracked GPS. So this actually is not new either. This has been happening for a couple of years, but it's just all about the introduction of it. So they're introducing it to, like, let's say, westernized, civilization if it's already been on the east so that's something that also was talked about and he saw in these documents one other thing he mentioned i believe it might be in the clip as well he said that the los angeles times in 1989 had a article that was talking about the the 10 i believe it's like the, the list of 10 or something for the next decade of stuff that they were going to have so I had screenshotted that because you can still find it. And if you type in Google, Los Angeles Times 1989, like 10 something of the decade, I forgot what it is, it'll pop up. But he said uh, number five, but it wasn't number five, it was number four. But I'm going to read number one, number two, number three, number four for you guys. So you guys can see that in 1989, this was already planned and talked about. So number one. Cash will become illegal in the future for all, but very small monetary transactions. By 2050, no paper money with a value of more than $10 will remain in circulation. Restrictions on the use of cash, chiefly paper money, would provide one cheap and effective method of crime prevention. So if people didn't understand that, if you've seen Minority Report with Tom Cruise before, you see how that was like preventing crime basically like before it happened i'm hearing a lot of stories about this trying to be like imp i guess implemented to some degree like today like that they're already doing stuff like that today and so we also see that they're trying to go cashless with everything they try to do that when you know cv19 was going around and we've had i would say like a numerous I mean, you have, you have it to where you can pay off your, your, your phone. You have the credit card stuff, which is already a form of credit system. So we've seen this happening for a while now. But now it's just so fast and warp speed that it's right in your face. You can't deny it. So that was number one. Number two is electronic immigrants. That already just sounds wrong. But electronic immigrants, people who telecommute via computers to work in another country, will be the new global workers of the future. That sounds horrible. I don't care how people look at that, but that sounds horrible. Number three was robots with human intelligence will be common within 50 years. Robots may one day possess levels of intelligence far greater than that of humans. So... I don't know if people paid attention to any of that stuff, but I have some of the tech stuff where the robots, I mean, you have the sex robots, which is ridiculous, but you actually have robots that they're creating with that. They're trying to be able to make babies with them. I'm pretty sure you've seen that Blanche. I'm pretty sure you've seen that Layla. Like I don't, it, it, robot babies, basically they're trying to make it to where it's like robots can have children and have this whole consciousness. And it, this is some crazy shit that, you know, most would just say it's like a sci-fi film, but they're really doing this stuff, which is terrible because there's no no one asked for it. But number four was uh, physical restraints such as prisons will become unnecessary in the future with the availability and widespread use of electrical and chemical implants that will allow 24 hour a day control of individuals behavior. So 
they just want to implant you so they can control your behavior and pretty much what you think and all that. We've known that for a while. I'll stop right there for now just to see if you guys had any questions or anything you wanted to say real quick. No, yeah, this stuff, it's crazy because I follow somebody in Shanghai and uh, she's talking yeah. about, she's like on the ground. Every other video is her crying, you know, because she's like mentally like losing it because she can't even go buy groceries half the time. And she has like four kids. So it's like crazy to see they're really rolling this stuff out. But I'm not so worried about the robots because we're going to have at least 20 years of these robots strictly being used for sex. So let's just not worry about that. <laughs> like they're just going to, they're not even going to yeah. any other technology. You know, <laughs> I agree. Like there's certain things, like I said, the UFO thing just doesn't matter to me. Like I think I'm pretty sure all of us on here understand like extraterrestrials exist. Like we're not all there is, but it's just that that's not what I'm worried about right now. And I'm pretty sure that's not what you guys are worried about right now, because we're not dealing with like, you know, we're not dealing with that aspect of things at all. We're dealing with, these people whether you want to say they work for demons or whatever at all but they literally just want to control humanity like that's it that's where we are with it and it's not a america thing or an australia thing or a canada thing it's the whole world <laughs> so it doesn't matter where you go so like this is this is the issue and this is the stuff that you know he breaks down in this book and outside of it as well that is important for people to understand because you know, it's every at the end of the day, it's going to come down to solutions. What can we do? And that's something, of course, that we'll get into as well. But I wasn't sure if you guys knew about any of this information at all. So I wanted to get through some of it before I pass it over uh, to you, Blanche, and you pass it to Layla. You know, that way we're not really just going over the same stuff. But all of that is is stuff that he's came across in these documents basically from like start to finish so the next thing i want to touch on is the one world totalitarian socialist government which is what he was talking about which is what they're trying to get us into in this totalitarian government so there is the creation of the federal democracy which is within the boundaries of washington dc so Anytime you pretty much hear federal and Blanche, I think we talked about this too, but anytime you hear federal, that's not us. That's not United States. That is foreign to the United States. Washington, the District of Columbia in itself is foreign to the United States. So what they wanted to do in this or what they want to do is the creation of the federal democracy. That is giving them the right to contract. So through that, do that means is that if we were too irresponsible, uh, meaning like, hey, you can't govern yourself, then we would contract to receive rights from that federal democracy and thus in return give up our freedom. So that, that leaves it to where it's like um, you have privileges, basically. You don't have rights. You have privileges. So, you, you know, if you're living in a household with somebody else, who's paying all the bills and stuff, they say, you could, you know, you could take the car, but you can only go a mile up the road. So that's pretty much where we're getting to. That's what they want. Now, secret societies is one of the main things that he talked about as well. And also JFK talked about uh, before he was assassinated because everybody who was trying to do good, their reward was a bullet, basically. Um, we can see that through history. So secret societies is what Bill Cooper said was destroying and subverting uh, the nation from within. So that's what we see really now. I mean, it, it's not that America is, is bad or something. It's there's people that are in there who are destroying America from the inside. And, and that's where we get confused with who's doing what, because we have pro black people saying it's all white people. And we got, you know, the white people, whatever, saying it's the Jews and it's this and that and that. It's like, it's not even that. It's these people that are within these societies that are causing this to happen. So um, when they're working behind the scenes, they use basically the Communist Manifesto as a blueprint. So that's why you, it's easy to say it's communism or some people say socialism. It's Marxism. It's this, it's that. 
but they use the same blueprint. And that's also what we're seeing right now. We're seeing the same blueprint being used as Hitler and as Stalin and Lenin. And like, it's, it's all the same thing. One of the things Cooper pointed out was that through the United Nations, which was created by this nation, actually, from an older organization called the League of Nations, which was the original foundation, at the highest levels of our government, the Constitution's already been scrapped. They already were like, yeah, we're, we're done with that. And so they're working under the aegis of the UN Participations Act, which you can also Google and look that up, and the United, the United Nations Charter which means there's no rights and only privileges, which is what we were talking about. So Participation Act is simply just saying, you know, you could participate, but, you know, you can't do whatever you want to do. So that's the UN. Anytime you hear the UN, that's also not on our side. They're not on our side at all. There's a lot of important factors into how this stuff is being built. And if you don't understand your own government, your own branches and all this stuff, then you're not going to you're not going to get it. It's about as simple as that. So there were some key figures he talked about as well, like Karl Marx and Adolf Hitler. But before I go into them, Blanche, I know you got something bottled up. You want to, you want to say, I mean, I'll just say this. Um, <clears throat> when I was listening to this uh, book, you know, I realized what's going to happen to most people. When you start hearing this stuff, like it's so outlandish that you know it's true. Like, like you know, what he, like you, you're listening to him talk and you know it's the truth because you can tell when somebody's gassing you up and lying first when they're telling you the truth. And even sometimes, even when he was talking, he was like, I don't know if it's this or this, but I know it's, it's something. And mm -hmm. I just think that most people, when they read this book, most folks just give up. And, and I think the problem in an information age is, you know, it, it propels a portion of society to, you know, want to go against this stuff and want to rise up and want to fight. But really what it does is it just makes most people turn into cowards. And most folks, because I was, I was listening to this and I was like, it's like a no-win situation almost. You know, for, for a second I caught myself thinking that in my mind, like, this is crazy. Like, this is absolutely nuts. And to think about, he wrote the book in 91, so this stuff is from the ages ago. Like they've been planning this stuff. They've perfected it by now. So I'm just like, but I still have to say that I was talking with someone and I was, um, we were talking about, I was telling him how the, the, the Jewish people, they're, they aren't actually a race. They took their religion and turned it into a nationality. I said, right. so they're not technically a, a real, I guess you would call people. They're just a group that took a religion made to a nationality. So he didn't know that. And so he's looking crazy. Like, what? So his mind is, you know, and then he says, well, you know, when I look up stuff, I don't just take everything. I got I to gotta look up to see what's the truth and what's not. So then he asked me, well, how do you determine what's true and what's not? And I told him, I said, what's true is the stuff you don't want to believe. If you want to believe it, it's a lie. If you don't want to believe it, then it's probably the truth. And I, and I said, so most people get to this pale horse book and I'm just shocked. I never even read the book. Like I got the book and it's just, my mind was blown. So, you know, you gotta bear with me. Um, but just for this information to be available to the public and up until two years ago, clueless for myself, like clueless. And Everything that this book talks about, I've literally seen in the past two years. Like, I literally have seen it playing out in real time. Like, I don't know, man. So it's, it, it, it's, I'm going to say it's, it, it's, it's eye-opening, but it's also scary because you're like, this is serious. And so I just know most people aren't probably as brave as you or Layla or I. Most people are going to get this information and they're going to just dig a deeper hole. They're not, they're not going to come out. And that's just, what, that's just the reality of it. This fight will really be fought between a small percentage of people against these global powers. That's really what it's going to boil down to. It's not going to be a whole bunch of people, you know, in this fight. 
Um, then I just listened to your video with the with guy talking about Karl Marx, Bill Cooper. And I'm just like, this is crazy. But anyway, so I say all that to say that <clears throat> the book is just so much information. I just took some notes. Um, yeah. I mean, everything, I mean, I was looking at the comments too, and everybody agrees pretty much with everything you said. I agree too. I think it's, uh, I, I want to touch on actually what you said about not everybody being brave. There is a interview or a lecture that Bill Cooper gave. And he said, I'm pretty much out in the front, you know, but I can't, I can't do this without you. Like I believe in the American people, which is why he's up here. Cause he said, other than if, if I wouldn't be, this is suicide, which, you know, when he said that, that shit actually really like touched me. Cause I was like, yo, like he ended up losing his life. In 2001, I was 10 years old when that happened. And looking at now where we're at in 2022, look how many people are sitting down doing nothing. You know, they're just watching the world implode. And, you know, it's like, forget bravery. It's just like, yo, you don't even have heart. You can't even, you can't even inform you know, your family without you feeling like, oh, you know, I'm going to be ostracized and all this other stuff. It's like, look, that is the last thing you need to be worrying about right now. Pretty soon you ain't going to be able to say a word. Yeah, I was saying, um, it, it, you know, it's almost like, again, this this fight is not really for anybody but people like us. Like, it's really not even... It's just not. And at the end of the day, this book has been around. Think about it. He published this book and he was dead 10 years later. So when I hear people talk about, you know, they killed Tupac, they killed Biggie, they killed Nipsey. No, they didn't. I said, they killed Bill Cooper. I said, they didn't kill those guys. They don't need to kill them. This is the problem. This is the information right here that's going to get your head knocked off. What Kennedy was talking about is going to get your head knocked off. Not somebody making rap songs. It's just not. It's not so we we've even we've even dumbed down the martyrs like we've even watered down the people that are actually threats to this establishment anybody that read this book you won't even look at the people the same like none of these people have been revolutionaries none of these people that you think are revolutionaries are revol they're not they're just parts of the system i'm reading this book like this dude literally put all this stuff in a book and published it like this is life threatening information that he did then he had a radio show like he basically put himself out there on the front, like he said, on the front line, and then he got murked, and nobody picked up the torch. Nobody right. picked the torch up. Like nobody said, well, maybe you could say, I guess, uh, Alex Jones, I guess maybe, but I don't know. Alex now, Jones. But see, that's all. I don't. I don't listen to Alex Jones. I don't trust him either. But Bill Cooper didn't. Bill Cooper didn't like him either, man. And, and okay. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna stay on Cooper's side of this because he. He's. Alex Jones ain't never had no clearance. Never. I don't know his background like that, but I know he didn't have nothing like that. So, you know, there are people out there to push out disinformation and fear mongering and things like that. And uh, you just kind of really have to do your betting, um, I would say. Uh, those Luminati cars, they had a um, mm. Alex Jones character on there. Mm. It's crazy, crazy, but I know that's crazy. I know, and I'm like, yeah, those were everything. those were actually released in '91, weren't they? Or '90? It was it was the '90s. Yeah, it was in the '90s. Yeah, Early yeah, 90s. yeah. But they had that type of character with the character yeah. breakdown back, and it's the same. And the guy actually was crazy. He looks like the younger version of Alex Jones when he was thinner. I might have to check it out. I haven't seen it, but I mean, I have looked at the cards. I just haven't seen. I haven't seen that one specifically. Yeah. Um, no, I just, I think, yeah, I like this pin comment. Don't read the book until you're mentally and emotionally ready. And, you know, yeah. that, you know, this is not going to be a war fought with the masses. And this is something I say often that I got from Bobby Hemet was the only thing the masses ever did was die. That's <laughs> all they did. So us waiting and feeling like we need to be validated or anticipate or have support from the masses you know, one of my friends, he actually told me, he's like, prophets always stand alone. They're always by themselves. 
-hmm. you know they always came by themselves they had god and they had their message and you know eventually they have followers but they started off by themselves so anyone who wants to be a part of this struggle realize it's a lonely path but that's okay because you have if you know you have to cultivate your faith <laughs> that's the only way you're gonna make it yeah so i wanted to go into the two figures that are i would say pretty important as to just with who bill cooper talked about but in bringing in this one world government that they want first one i want to get into is adolf hitler so <clears throat> hitler was born in 1889, he died in 1945, apparently. I don't believe that. He died in that bunker. Why don't I believe that? Because the Nazis never went away. No. They just integrated into our government. Mm -hmm. And for people who aren't privy on that information, just look up Operation Paperclip. Because we've had generals, all these high elites in, in the Nazi party, that have infiltrated into our government, which is why we can still see the same tactics being used today. Now, one thing about Hitler is he was, he really, really studied propaganda, like to a T. That's why he was able to come to power, really. So Adolf admitted that he thought that the public was stupid <laughs> and that the Marxists of his time where his teachers, like his master teachers, that's where he got everything from, was Marxism. And they were basically the master teachers of propaganda, or political propaganda, I would say. The propaganda was directed towards the masses in Germany. That's why, if you ever look back, you can see like so many people, um, you, you think, why would so many people follow Hitler? He was just like an American politician, basically. Mm -hmm. He said that the people don't think, uh, they don't use logic. And that they rely on emotions and feelings, which is what we can see happening now. In the news cycle of things that happen, they play off of people's emotions and feelings, which if you operate in that way, you can't think logically. So that's what we call propaganda. I'm sure, you already know that, Layla. Uh, propaganda, he said, has to be used in a repetition because people don't think they forget, basically. They forget very fast, very quickly. That's why we had Vine, we have Snapchat, we got these 30-second, 15-second clips, because people's minds, they don't operate at a higher intelligence. So the repetition that we see used are such things as, like, Republicans are racist, Trump is a threat to our democracy. Like, they say this stuff all the time. It's all the time in the news. If you literally can pull up different clips, probably on CNN, you can see the repetitiveness of all the stuff that they say. They say it. it they, they, it's a form of propaganda. Let's just put it that way. So if you say it enough, and then it becomes truth to the people because they just keep on hearing it. So it is a tactic that's used and was used by Hitler. Because of the repetition and the brainwashed public, that's how it gains its power, basically. So that's something, that's a tactic that Hitler used in order to brainwash the masses. So what he said was that what a propagandist, like a true propagandist, fosters is not independent thought. He said, but mass emotion. So I remember, I forgot the guy's name, but he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, and he was the, I believe, the inventor of the mRNA. I mean, I think he used the term mass psychosis. Yeah, Rob. So that can be considered the same thing, technically, is a mass psychosis, a mass emotion, a high mind of people is what they want to create. And so we see a lot of that. We see a lot of that when we watch these interviews and stuff on YouTube of people going around asking people, you know, what do you think of Kamala Harris? What do you think of Joe Biden? And they're like, yeah, I think they're doing a great job. And then they ask, well, can you <laughs> tell me one good thing they've done? And they can't tell you because they're brainwashed. So that's pretty much the same tactic. And then we can't, as the people who have minds, we can't communicate with these people because they're just so far gone, pretty much. Like, there's no, there's really no helping them once they fell in that trap because only they can get themselves out. So this was uh, pretty much like the formula that, that got Hitler into, po uh, into power over every, like all the people. He had all those followers. It was just using propaganda to a T. Hitler was influenced in his thinking by one of Europe's leading men of science, 
which was Gustave Le Bon. He wrote a famous 1895, basically, book or piece on the psychology of crowds, which could be considered a crowd mind, a hive mind, a group mind, that. So that's where Hitler learned and studied to, to utilize that propaganda um, that he used to get to power. So the Western leaders, so here in the U.S., they, they didn't do that. Like, they, they didn't follow that at all. So they had no idea pretty much what they were going up against. And so there was a lot of anti-Western, like, propaganda messages here. And that basically successfully took down the institutions and the traditional ideas of the West. So now we see them talking about, I mean, you can see this in modern times, you can see them talking about how, you know, America's racist. Ameri America is just, oh, this has always been a racist country. And this is, no, it has not. They're getting you to hate your country. That is the same tactic that they were using back then, and they're using it now. The same thing. So one of the, one of the main reasons why Hitler is so important is because it's the same playbook. And it's being used in a modern time, like right now. And since none of us were born, when Hitler was around, we don't know about it because we don't study history. We don't study, you know, tactics. We don't study. Uh, one thing that I think Bill Cooper had also mentioned was that if you don't know your enemy, you can't fight your enemy. You don't even know who your enemy is. So there's basically nothing you can do if you don't know who you're fighting and what they, and what they do. So... Hitler was an important figure because of the tactics that he used. So those same tactics are being used today. And we have people from Hitler's regime installed into our government, such as Werner von Braun, who was like the head, like the head engineer of NASA. So I don't know if people know who, who he is, but NASA is basically like the public space program. We have the public space program and we have a secret space program. The secret sp uh, space program is obviously you don't know about it. That's where all those black projects go into different planets and doing all this other stuff. Extraterrestrial, all that is stuff that you will never see because that's not for you to see. We, we have that public uh, space cr program, which is NASA, which has been infiltrated by the Nazis, too. So different forms of our government, we've had the Nazis installed or different uh, people from it. So one of the other important figures that this is really relevant to right now is Karl Marx. So Karl Marx, uh, which you will hear Marxism a lot, probably now, definitely. For people who didn't even know what the hell that was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. So. Karl Marx was born in 1818 and died in 1883. So he didn't even live to see the 90s. Um, so he was somebody who was studied. Now, Blanche, I think you saw that. I don't know if you saw the whole video or just some of it. but So you'll probably already know some of this. Well, Layla, I'm not sure if you finished, but um, I believe I sent you some of this as well. Is Karl Marx was the founder of Marxism. Okay, that's Marx. Marxism. So... Karl Marx was, and, and this is mainly like I would say, in, in their words accurately, so from back in the time. So Karl Marx was customarily depicted as an admirer of Abraham Lincoln. And he was a resolute foe of chattel slavery, they say. So he was against slavery. And he was a courageous champion of Negro rights, Negro equality, Negro freedom. So, so he was just for the black people, apparently. And uh, But this is scarcely the truth, pretty much. Uh, there's, there's really no truth to that at all. That's how he was depicted and how he, he was... I mean, maybe if you Google it, they'll probably even try to make him seem like he was an angel or something, because we know Google is definitely not on our side. But that wasn't the truth at all. So we'll start getting into the truth. So publicly and for political reasons, Karl Marx posed as a friend to black people, which, I mean, who do we know does that today? Democrats. So in private, he was an anti-black racist of like the highest caliber. So 
he he hated black people. He hated a lot of people, actually. Black people was more so of the focus because of what we can see happening to us today with this political party that they follow so blindly. It is the same blueprint being laid out. So he had a contempt for the entire race of black people. And that was expressed by comparing black people to uh, animals and to idiots. He would use the N-word in private, you know, when he's having his meetings and all that stuff. He would just derogatory towards black people. And um, he believed that black people were not a form of evolution, but, but degeneration. So he just... <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, when they tell you like Donald Trump is racist, I ain't never heard anything like that coming out of his mouth ever. So this dude was like God awful, basically. He just hated everybody. He had a, a, parano a paranoid hatred for Jews, apparently. He hated Jews. Uh, he hated the common man. So basically the masses. He just hated pretty much everybody. I don't know who he thought was like, okay in his eyes but he hated pretty much everybody whoever and he had this fascination um what'd you say layla whoever was paying his bills for the month because he was a welfare queen I, <laughs> I guess i mean i don't know man he he if you just go and you look into him like i, I only know he had like one friend and the other uh, other friend that he had was also a racist like extremely and he was a uh uh communist they both were communists so I mean, I don't know. Do communists have friends? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And so he had a so yeah, he had this fascination with this guy named Pierre Trumeau, and he was a uh, French architect and also like an author. And he was also, you guessed it, a racist to the highest caliber. So they just followed each other. Pretty much what it what I gathered from a lot of the communists is they are right. They just don't like anybody. Like they're. They hate everybody, pretty much. They're above everybody. You're below them. So uh, one of the things that he followed, though, of Pierre Trumeau was his race theories. OK, so uh, there's a quote from Trumeau that says uh, the common Negro type is the degenerate form of a much higher one. Basically saying that black people are degenerates and, you know, whatever else he thought was higher than them is what he thought was higher than them. So they don't have, they don't favor black people at all. But the important thing to keep in mind is that they befriended black people. That's what Karl Marx did. He befriended black people. So when you study a little bit, for Marx or Marxism, it says, in fact, actually, you know what? I won't go there yet. I'll just talk about critical race theory because that's what's important. That's what's being taught right now. That's what's being pushed right now. And that is the same thing that Karl Marx was doing. <clears throat> and critical race theory is targeting black people and saying that, oh, you know, there's just so much injustice, yada, yada, blah, 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 which isn't the truth. But this, again, is a tactic to get you to hate your country, to hate yourself, to hate your freedoms. This, that's the tactic being used. So... If you go on Google and you type in critical race theory, one of these questions will pop up. And the question is, what are the main ideas of critical race theory? So listen to this. It says, simply put, critical race theory states that the U.S. social institutions, the criminal justice system, education system, the labor market, housing market, and healthcare system are laced with racism embedded in laws, regulations, rules, and procedures that lead to different outcomes by race. Now, I'm pretty sure all three of us on here know that that's bullshit. And everybody watching knows that that's bullshit because they're trying to get you to believe that at every single level, every level of your government and institutions, there's racism. And that's a tactic that they used to get people to give up their rights and freedoms. To hate, your, to hate your country, to hate your constitution, to hate your Bill of Rights, this is the same shit they used back then. So, I want to say this, and I'm going to pass it off to you, uh, Blanche, and then uh, you can pass it to Layla when you're done. This is back on Karl Marx. Originally, the Marxist left built his political program on the theory of ca uh, class conflict. 
Karl Marx believed that the primary characteristics of industrial societies was the imbalance of power between capitalists and workers. So listen to this. The solution to that imbalance, according to Marx, was revolution. The workers would eventually gain consciousness of their plight, seize the means of production, overthrow the capitalist class, and usher in a new socialist society. And this is what they're doing literally right now. During the 20th century, a number of regimes underwent Marxist-style revolutions, and each ended in disaster. Socialist governments in the Soviet Union, China, Cambodia, Cuba, and elsewhere racked up a body count of nearly 100 million people. They are remembered for gulags, show trials, executions, and mass starvations. In practice, Marx's ideas unleash man's darkest brutalities. And so this is pretty much what they want for us now. Like, they're still using the same blueprint. For everyone who's followed that far, that's, a, I think, a lot of information to digest just on those people. I'm done with that very long introduction to uh, these figures that that are really important to understand the totality of what we're going to talk about. The reason why I had to go through that is because of that, because some people are probably going to ask, well, what does Black Lives Matter have to do with so, so what and so forth? When I had a conversation yesterday and we we're talking about Angela Davis, the Black Panthers, the Black Fist, the Black Fist is a communist fist. It's communism. So a lot of this stuff matters because it all connects into the same tactics that were used back then to overthrow basically people's freedoms. And it's important to understand all that stuff, that basis first, before you get into like, I would say the meat of everything, because now things will start to connect. And so I'll pass it over to you, Blanche, and what you got for us. Yeah, I was talking with somebody yesterday and he said that America was systemically racist. And so I asked him, I said, okay, so what in America can't you do? I said, like, what have you been denied in America? Like, who said you can't do? Now, keep in mind, he's college educated, corporate America. Keep in mind, he's, you know, living his best life. So he said, he said it's a denial. He said it's a denial of resources. Thinking that sounds like very communist, you know. You, you rich people, rich people. It's funny when the guy was talking in the book, he was talking how all the leaders of the communist movement were rich. Like it's like all the rich people leading it, but they're telling poor people that rich people are against them. Like it, it's it's insanity. But he said a denial of resources, and so I said, okay, give me an example of you being denied resources. His example literally was, he said when he was on campus, going to college, getting his education, he said there was a building that had the state of the art stuff in there. He said no one told him that this building had the, the good stuff in there. He said he didn't figure out the building had the good stuff in there, like with the computers and all this stuff, until two years later. I said, so your example of America being systemically racist is the fact that no one white told you that this building had better equipment in it. He was like, yeah. He said, why didn't they tell me? That's literally, literally that, that, so I said, so let me get this straight. When you were taking your test in high school, nobody came up and gave you the answers. When you took your SAT, nobody gave you the answers. When you were in college taking your final exam, nobody gave you the answer, but this moment in life, <laughs> they're supposed to give you the keys to go to the building. I said that you walk by every single day. You see people coming out the building every day. You walk by it. I said, why'd you just go in it? He said, because they didn't. He said, it's the mindset. You see, when you don't see it, then you don't, you don't want to go. Like it, it, but see, I have to say that. So I'm, I'm listening to this guy talk about Karl Marx. Karl Marx is literally the Jewish version of Black Lives Matter. He, he's, he's fraud, he hates everybody. He's fraudulent, um, scammer, just like everything they are, he actually is. I mean, to the, I mean, don't want to work. I mean, hates black people. The son, his son-in-law was black. So he said, mm -hmm. but he, he had money. So he wanted to be, now he, now he wants to be his friend. It's just like, it's the same people same thing with Margaret Sanger. She's presented mm -hmm. one. Uh, Roe v. Wade. 
she never had an abortion. Like all the people are frauds. And so what you find is that all the folks leading this mo these movements are frauds, even down to the, the nonprofit organizations funding the communists. Like it's just crazy that everybody that we think is good is horrible. And everybody that we think is bad is actually good. It's like, it's like a great inversion of everything. But let me just get to my notes real quick. I'm gonna be about five minutes later, then you can go. Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning I wrote down, um, they basically are, are Satanists. Um, he talked about the Ark of the Covenant, talked about George Bush Sr. being the first king of America. Um, he mentioned America being under martial law since the Lincoln. Um, basically, he said what I thought was was scary was he said the fact that we have FEMA means there's no constitution because FEMA can supersede, like you know where we are now. FEMA's in control pretty much, so it's really what they want to do. It's like no kind of we're just emergency youth authorization for everything. Like we just crazy, but. Um, this is what stuck out to me. He said, don't be at home during the holidays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> like, he can't, like, he said it a few times. Like, I know you think this is, he said, do not be caught at your, which, at home on the holidays. So I'm scratching my head, like, dang, that's gonna catch every, think about the holidays. Everybody's gonna be at home. Like, that's literally like, everybody's gonna be at home. Whether you're a freedom fighter, whether you're a socialist, whether you, everybody's gonna be at home. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was crazy because it would make sense for that to be a day you would just use to just run everybody up. But he mentioned about the greatest threat to all of this stuff is basically patriots in America. Basically, like American <laughs> patriots are the greatest threat because we actually will believe in freedom so like mm -hmm. folks actually will fight for freedom so it's kind of like i don't know but it's just funny how all the propaganda conveniently is going against all the patriots like when i see things like freedom is freedom is linked to white supremacy even the guys that were caught in the back of the u-haul van i'm like first of all let me see how did y'all catch them if they were marching outside with a big banner that said strong families make strong nations, they weren't hiding. Like I'm just, it's just insane. But they said they found them hiding in the U.S. Anyway, my point is all the propaganda now is really towards patriots. And what they're doing is they're giving the face of a patriot as being white, even though mm -hmm. patriotism has nothing to do with color. They're saying that the patriots are all white. So you can attach the, the racism thing and this was this is what brings in communism, Marxism, socialism, all that stuff. Um the war it's funny, he talked about the war on drugs. I took so many notes really too much, but he, he mentioned the war on drugs leading to a cashless society. And you mentioned earlier about like minority report. Uh I saw a film on Netflix where in the future you have a device in you where when somebody walks by you, you can see their bio. You can see where they work, how old they are, height, weight, everything. Like, But the people that were off the grid, so to speak, when you saw their bio, it was all like white noise or like, you know, static. And so in the scene of the movie, the guy with the girl, he looks, he can't see her bio. So he's like looking back trying to see who is she because he's like shocked. And then she disappears. But anyway, she was used for a bigger plot to do a conspiracy. But... um. Basically, New World Order, um, they're going to start executing people. I read somewhere where Obama had ordered a whole bunch of guillotines. Um, yep. <laughs> What's and, he going to do with that? But Hopefully, he, kill it out. It, it, was, it was crazy, though. Right? <laughs> you know, we're talking like this, and there's people listening like, there's no way this is true. But to me, this is where Hollywood comes into place, because Hollywood puts all the truth in these movies and these shows and stuff. And so you're conditioned to say, okay, you, you're really only, in, think about it, we only enjoy movies and television because we know, we think it's not real. Mm -hmm. If we thought it was real, we'd be terrified. But we, we, we don't think it's real, so we're kind of like just enjoying what we're watching. Think about it, popcorn, soda, 
jumping, laughing, give me 3D glass, all of his fun and games. But if it's real, you wouldn't even want to watch it. Like nobody wants to read the book, Behold the Pale Horse. Um, but Hollywood did a great job with the propaganda of making us think that what they're showing us isn't actual, actually reality. And then what's on the news and the media is actually what's fake. And it's funny that when Trump said fake news, like to me, that was the biggest revelation that anybody could have got because yeah. no one in that position ever said the news was fake. Yeah. Like we never had anybody of that magnitude ever get on a, a wide platform and run a campaign on the news being fake. Nobody ever did that. And the fact that he said it, to me, really made him the biggest threat because he dared to say it and everybody knew he was telling the truth. Um, the guy mentioned the post office will become the police. Um, they mentioned destroying the small businesses. I mean, I'm going to just say this, man. I was blown away by the book. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I was listening to the book. The, the guy with the accent kind of, you know, drives it home. Uh, like you listening to a, a double J, you know, a 007 debriefing. But the book blew me away because it was published in 1991. And I'm thinking back to 1991, how old was I? Uh, I think I was in junior high school or something. But I'm just living my life oblivious to what's going on. And this, like, my parents didn't know. Yeah. My friends didn't know. My family didn't know. No, nobody knew about Behold the Pale Wars. If they did, they weren't saying anything. But I just think that these past two years have only confirmed everything in this book. And maybe before these past two years, if I had read this book, I might not even believe it. But the fact that I've been through these past two years, nothing's off limits now. Now I know what they're capable of. Because think about it. We literally saw a level of propaganda, propaganda we never saw before with this Peter pandemic. We've never seen where they had it on TV 24 hours a day, on the sides of buses, on billboards, like literally commercial, like literally they they literally shoved this. I think the Germans called propaganda mind rape. Literally, they were mind raping us for the past two years with propaganda. Like I'm talking about to the point where even when you opened your phone up, something was popping up with the Peter pandemic. Like there was literally everything was talking about the Peter pandemic. And now we fast forward, what are they saying about it now? How did how did we how did we go from twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, to now it's barely mentioned? Let's get rid of the mask. Let's just have a no. So I'm gonna just leave it on this and just say that Bill Cooper really is a martyr and he risked his life for all of us. And I think it's just disgraceful and a disservice for us to not act. I mean, we talk about the ancestors and what they endured and all. Let me say this too, but I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, I don't believe the ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that slavery was forced. I don't believe, I believe the civil rights movement was all staged. I even believe, believe, even when it came to lynchings, they were taking already dead bodies and just hanging them in trees. You don't actually have to do a lynching. You can just take a dead body and hang it in a tree, and it's a lynching. So to me, this level of propaganda has been going on. Think about it, this book is written in 1991. So this stuff has been going on. Think about it, Karl Marx was born in the 1800s. So this level of propaganda has been going on for centuries, probably even thousands of years. So because it's going on so long, I don't trust any of the major events that have taken place to get our emotions all riled up and put us in a frenzy. I don't believe in none of this stuff because I know good and well back in the 1950s, the average person couldn't afford to go outside and protest. You had to work for, for, for $10 a week. So there's no way you had time to go out there and go sit in, in a cafe and get a milkshake poured in your head. You, you had a time to do it. I'm sorry. You said, so I don't believe it. But I don't believe none of it. And when it comes to slavery, you can't make me believe that all these people was enslaved for this long a period of time. No, I don't believe it. So 
I don't believe none of it now. And people can say, oh, Blanche, you trip you off on the deep end. But if you read this book, you just realize how deep this stuff goes. Like, literally, everything is planned and orchestrated. It's not an accident. I don't care if it's a, an earthquake, if it's a thunderstorm, if, it's a, if they can make clouds produce rain, what makes you think this stuff is real? Like, if they have all these Operation This, Operation, Operation Paperclip, Operation Notebook, Operation Textbook, Operation uh, Agenda 2021, Agenda 20, it's like, it's just it, all this stuff. I don't believe none of it. So because I don't believe none of it, I'm going to question everything. And I'm going to do my darndest to really push back on everything we were even taught in the history books. I'm about to be done. The guy I talked to yesterday, I asked him, I said, I said, what do you know about slavery from a firsthand experience? He said, nothing. I said, then that means your idea of slavery was all given to you by someone. And that someone involved a producer, a director, a script, cameras, and actors. So I said, so even your idea of slavery is false because you're getting it from a production. You didn't see any, you never talked to a slave. He's all, well, I've seen a plantation. I said, you saw a place <laughs> that they said was a plantation. You haven't seen a functioning plantation with you hearing hymns in the background and nobody know. You ain't, you ain't, <laughs> you ain't heard whips cracking. You ain't seen her babies crying. You ain't seen none of that. All that stuff is Hollywood. You haven't seen none of it firsthand, so just think about it. You got your whole identity entrenched in something that you've never actually seen or touched. That's, that's how deep the propaganda goes. You don't know how it was on a plantation. You don't know if they drunk cool, you don't know they drunk iced tea, sweet tea, lemonade. You don't know what they did. All you know is when Hollywood shows you, you got the white people on the porch having a great day, and you got the black people in the field looking back at them upset. I said, that's all you Hollywood. You don't know what took place. So anyway, I'm questioning everything. Um, behold the pale horse. Behold, behold the pale horse should be read in school. Um, uh, so if you got a private school or charter school, assign it as one of the summer reading courses and let your students come back with their mind blown. Uh, yeah, I'm done. That's it. That's all I got. There was something you had mentioned, and Bill Cooper had said, uh, which was a very important thing. He said, rights are a Trojan horse. And when he said it, <clears throat> first thing I thought about, gay rights. Gay rights, civil rights, anything with rights has always been a Trojan horse for some other shit. Yeah. And that is something that is important, I think, to keep in your mind, too, when you see these movements, that they are political movements that are leading towards something. And if it ain't something that's going to benefit you or us as a people, then it's benefiting somebody else. So I just wanted to add that to it. But go ahead, Layla, your turn. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with Blanche. And when he was mentioning the slavery thing, I remember one time I was watching a documentary on slavery and they said they hung little black kids from the roof, from the, um, from where a ceiling fan was instead of a ceiling fan, which they had, they said they hung the black kids so they could wave the fan for the white folks. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, but I mean, that's all right. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they racialize everything. Um, and you know, whether or not slavery is real or not, it's a great way because this is the thing. People don't understand propaganda is that it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not it doesn't care about your personal opinion because the way it works is it's both a mental thing it's not real you know it's just an idea in your head but it's also a physical thing it 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 begins physical processes it triggers emotions which trigger hormones and then they build neural networks in your brain so it's the place that most education misses between the the mental realm and the physical realm. And that's where propaganda sits. So it's, um, and that's really hard for people to conceptualize. So it's like, when you're talking to people about things and you say that's not true, okay, that's great, you say it's not true, but 
you're not going to go in someone's brain and rip out the neural networks that are physically there that mm. tell the person instinctively like beyond you know their conscious awareness that that's something's real so you know that's one of the the tricky parts of propaganda but um overall the book was just such a brutal brutal piece it was just so he just laid it out as if okay this is what it is and um one of the things that i really really enjoyed about the book was he mentioned that he, societies are just as easy to automate as you would automate a shoe factory. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing a lot of people miss. They think <laughs> they're so involved with everything. And they think they're so in control, but that's not the case. And so that's how the elites look at us. They just say, okay, here's a bunch of gerbils. Let's put some food down and they're going to scatter and they're going to run. Um, they know how to manipulate those emotions because they know that the limbic brain, the, the reptile brain, let's say, because our brain evolved in stages. We have a lower level brain that just responds to, okay, stimulus so that we can survive. And it doesn't require a lot of energy to process information. It doesn't require that energy. It just responds. And then you have the higher level brain, the neocortex, that's the one that does the rational thinking. You know, that's the one that's gonna say, okay, let me look at this book, let me dec decipher it, let me, let me look at reality and, and do some analytical thinking, let me look at some patterns and see if I can pick something up. And these are all things that are useful to us to have a brain that behaves like this. But if you don't understand how the brain even works as a person, because you don't need to understand how the brain works to listen to Cardi B and do twerking in the street. You don't have to, you know, know how the neocortex is going to process information to go get a bottle service at a club. So this is not something that's considered important, unfortunately. It's not something cool or exciting. But if you can understand this, you can start to say, okay, let me make sure I can process information and control what's going on inside me um, because we're not behind the wheel of most of the processes in our brain like most of the processes in our body so behold a pair of horse i mean it makes sense that he would just lay it out the way he did because rather than try to sugarcoat it or make it more entertaining you know, because people he knows that are able to process this information, you're just going to process it. It is emotionally very heavy to deal with. But, you know, people like us and people who are watching and everyone who really cares about their freedom, we've already mastered, you know, these levels that we don't, we're not like the masses. We're not going to just respond to emotion and things. And that's one of the, the, the other quotes that I really liked was, he was talking about for the masses, they just get the exoteric information. They just get, you know, this is a brick, this is a house, this is a shoe. They, they get that. They get the, the high level, just labels. They don't look at what is the deeper meaning of things? What does this represent? They don't deal in some symbolism. You know, and that's one of the good things about religion is even though so many people through the years were... Um, were uh, attacked in religion. A lot of the things like studying symbolism and understanding some of those esoteric meanings has been passed down. They did try to hide it a lot, but you can still see it. So there's some saving grace. And I grew up um, in Islam, like that was my family's religion. But you know, all of the religions, they have that esoteric, they have that, that sense where you can understand reality. Because reality is not just the surface, you know? And that's how we're able to go through this, is we can look and we can say, okay, they've been running these campaigns for two years. They say this, they say that, it doesn't make sense. What are they really saying? Like, what's the, what, is, what, is the, what is the end goal here? Like, you know, and it's sad to see that so many people don't even have imagination. They can't even visualize what could be a scenario, what could happen. Um, 
you can literally tell them that this stuff is going to be used for control you know like <laughs> doing in china right now they're shutting people's clearance off so they can't even go into buildings like we were telling people that two years ago and everybody was like no no but it's just sad because <laughs> sad because you know that's the thing is you're never going to talk to them you have to control them because that's all there is to it these people have decide like the regular people have decided they're going to give up all of their personal responsibility so there's nothing else you can do but the other quest uh, the other um thing and i know one of the panelists is going to talk about it with the quiet warfare um they talk about reduce the economic energy of the world to a safe level by a process of benevolent slavery and genocide so they're shutting down the economy right now they're literally doing that and in this book he explains that and then he says the general public refuses to improve its own mentality and its faith in its fellow man it's because it's a herd and it's a blight upon the earth like that is the state that we're in and it's just crazy to see they're going through all the stages and i think that when they finally really like tighten up it's not going to be that you're not going to get enough food cuz you can get enough calories through so many different means okay you can grow mushrooms you can do whatever but the psychological amount of stress that's going to be placed on these people you thought covid was bad or c19 you thought that was bad if these people do not get their dopamine hits and their ad food addiction met they're going to be gone like <laughs> that's going to be some chaos cuz they need those empty galleries but um it's just yeah it's just crazy to see how all of this is playing out and um i'm just trying to mentally prepare myself and i hope everybody is as well well i don't think they really are again most people are terrified of this book cuz if if the book scared me reading it i know good <laughs> hell that that the that the sheep you know it, it was a section in the book where he talked about the goyim i guess the goyim is everybody that's non-jew not them yeah it, not the illuminati uh, like they talked about them like or us like we were just like the little um of the, we don't even deserve to even exist like you know so and, but guess what from their perspective i can see why because mm -hmm. just think about the average person that we know that don't they don't even they don't want to do nothing they just want to just let this stuff happen don't want to bug don't want to fight don't want to just it's just like just mindless consuming zombies so i get why they don't respect the masses it makes sense because actually we we both probably view people the same way you know the people that want to fight against this stuff and the folks that are actually doing all this stuff we actually see the people in the middle that we're fighting for the same way cuz we all see them as like sheep and you know cowardly and you know all this stuff but yeah yeah no, i agree um i think that you know one thing is we we talk about the book the information is definitely in the book um and of course when we have the the guest on i'm sure they'll go over a lot of that but other than that when you just look at the man himself and what he was saying outside of the book just you know at lectures or interviews or whatever i mean he and that's kind of to go off of what you said too blanche is like he knew for a fact this is what's happening and if you look at these documents even just google it you can google project i believe it's red light project um M mk naomi is what it is that was the biological warfare that was used such as like AIDS HIV this type of this stuff is real it's not like it's it's not a conspiracy theory you know it's not even a theory at all it's real if you just look it up and so this stuff is there and the information is there and if the information is there it now comes down to what are you going to do with the information and what we are doing right here and even the people who are just just viewing and watching is we're literally providing a lot of this information to you for you to go and look up yourself as well get the book read that because this should light a fire under you to to do something for sure i mean obviously i see the manipulation the propaganda being used but i see these people who are over here talking about for an example the abortion and you know oh 
you shouldn't have a say so over my body. It's like, I don't think you understand that Roe v. Wade federalized abortions. Anything federal, you do not want because that is foreign. That is outside of your power. So these people who are talking like this don't understand their government at all. They don't understand the branches of their government. They don't understand how the government works. They don't understand that there's foreign outside of your government that wants to oversee your government. So when you talk about freedom of choice, you got to understand the words that they use. Okay, so they talk about freedom of choice, something they bring up a lot, but there's no choice in federalization because that means that that oversees your sovereignty. The first time I got introduced to the book, I was eight years old because, you know, my brother's seven years older than me. Mm. And um, it just that was the first time I ever got introduced to the term Illuminati. Mm. And, um, you know, my brother was just like, you know, 15. He was a stoner and he was just like, yo, bro, it's this group of people that run the world, bro. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm ta- we shared a room, so I'm just like taking it in. Like, this sounds like, you know, I trust my brother. It sounds like, you know, pretty uh, accurate stuff, you know. I didn't know who ran the world at the time. I didn't do any, I didn't know anything at that time. So it all seemed like he was telling me the truth. And then I remember um, Nas on the Untitled album, he was like, you know, on the, the song Testify, he was like, you know, was it William Cooper that told you that the pale horse was the future? And, you know, at that time I was like 17 and I was like, you know what, I'm going to read this book. Even though I, even though my brother told me about the contents, I want to know for myself. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it was great that at, at that time YouTube existed because maybe, you know, in 98, I wouldn't have been able to look at the Zapruder film and stuff like that to, like, cross-reference and say, like, man, this guy's probably on to something. Even though I got different views, you know, not that I have, I'm against anything. It's just that, like, I, I really don't know, man. I really don't know with the JFK assassination. I don't, I really don't know because they didn't release that footage until, like, nine years after he was murdered so or supposedly murdered. So, you know, that didn't get released until the 70s. He was killed in 63. So I uh, imagine if 9-11 happened and no one saw the footage until 2010. Wow. You know, you know so I, I really don't know. There's a bunch of frames missing in the Zapruder film, you know, so I, I really don't know about that. Because, you know, some people say that it, was just, it wasn't even, you know, JFK. It was, it was a dummy, stuff like that. You know, I've, I've heard of stuff like that being, being the case. But And then JFK was crooked, you know, his whole family, you know, they were with the mob. So like I, I really don't I really don't know, man. I don't know what went down with that. Um then you had like E. Howard Hunt, the CIA guy that uh had the deathbed confession, and he said there was a bunch of hit teams that didn't know about each other. They, you know what I mean? He said it was a French hit team that was there and they were the ones shooting from the grassy knoll and that they, they didn't know about Harvey Oswald and all that stuff. But I'm sure people, you know, uh got their views on JFK and I guess like the key bono, like who stood to gain, obviously, you know. Uh, he was printing treasury notes. Mm-hmm. He was trying to go to, you know, stuff like that. So obviously, I guess, you know, the Federal Reserve and the Sachs Coburg Gotha family wouldn't take kindly to stuff like that. So, um, I, I, you know, that, that all makes sense if you look at it that way. Like, man, why JFK got killed and then him talking about, um, you know, being in, being in the Navy and seeing ships go into the ocean and, you know, the, the sea parting and all that type of stuff. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's wrong. The ocean's a big place, man. So I, I, I really, I really don't know, man. Um, Bill Cooper, I feel like he was definitely on it, man. In a lot of ways. Um, I don't know if it was really a conspiracy. I don't know if he got murdered. I don't know if he got himself killed. Cause I feel like all death is suicide at some level. So I don't know if he put himself in position to get killed or what. Cause I feel like you, you know, as much as martyrs are cool, it's like, we need you to keep your body alive so you can carry the consciousness. And, like, I just feel like it kind of sucks that he died. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he was accurate, though, like you were saying about 9-11 and everything like that. And, and he definitely uh, makes you think twice about Alex Jones. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, so Ooh, I really you know what? I really Hey, don't... Taylor, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think I remember not too long ago, weren't you on Alex Jones' show? Yeah, I've been on Alex Jones' show a few times, man. And it's whack because they won't let me upload the one when we were talking about breathwork. It was just specifically about breathwork. Every time I upload it, they give me a strike on my YouTube, so I can't upload wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Now, what? Uh, how did you get that link uh, to him? Like, how did that interaction occur? The first time I talked to Alex was about Dr. Sebi in 2010. 
Mm. And um, uh, that was the beginning. That was when I first, the first time I got his, one of his producer's numbers. And, you know, every, occasionally I would text him, you know, like, and just say like, hey, you know, how about this? You know, maybe, you know, like you might want to have this guest on or look at this guy or whatever. And I never really abused it. So like when I call, he lets me through. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. I just never abused it. I just never like. I, I always feel like it's not something I want to like do too much. But I definitely, you know, if I have something to say, I guess I really kind of, I wait. You know, I wait for. I know his flow, so I know kind of when I can call in and when I can get through without being blocked, because they screen the calls and it's it's different producers sometimes. So you got to get past that firewall, kind of. What um from having that like that interaction you know and then also knowing about bill cooper and what he said about him what is your take on alex jones after all that i mean uh like you said about about, about what he was saying about alex jones and the um and the card thing and the tarot card thing you know they also had the card that was ron paul too in that deck it looked just like ron paul you know ron paul was like you know he was supposed to be the the savior in a lot of ways you know at, at the time in like 2007 2008 right so i i you know i really I, he could it could be accurate I, it's tough man because i feel like everybody has parasites so i feel like you know bill, bill cooper's parasites is what got him killed they got him they attracted his death and uh, you know i feel like you know if you're not dying naturally there's some sort of parasite situation going on like if you're not dying in your sleep in a dream something there's some sort of parasite going on inside that person. And so that's the tough part. Like, I, I, I believe that he believed everything he was saying. I don't think he was being dishonest. If he ever lied, I think he just was repeating something that he didn't know wasn't true. But um, I feel like everybody should read the book, man. I feel like it's, it's, it's worth reading. I feel like it's introductions, like Illuminati 101. You know, you, you kind of got to read it. Or, or you kind of don't really have a background of what's going on. It, it is kind of like the playbook of what's what's about to happen in a lot of ways, you know, as far as, like you were saying, like, you know, they're going to have uh, people going to come into people's homes on Thanksgiving and stuff like that, and, or, you know, holidays, like you are saying. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I really don't know, man. I, I, I feel like Alex Jones is the same way. He, I feel like he believes a lot of what he says mm -hmm. is true. And then you can look at it the other side of it, you know, a lot of his guests, Zionists, I think, even though I love Trump, I feel like he's a Zionist. Um, I feel like uh, it's it's tough, you know. I, but I, I can't. I don't know. I don't know if you should really be mad at it. that's his gang, you know. In a lot of ways, if you you know you're a Zionist Jew or whatever, then you know you got Zionist Muslims, you got Zionist Christians, you know. So it's like I, I don't know to just like condemn this person because they are Zionists, you know, because they feel like they're part of a chosen people or whatever. So I, yeah. I don't know, but um, I, you I feel like his gang. You, you also, you had a post, I think maybe on Facebook or something, but I, I had screenshotted it and I had posted it on mine was about the Federal Reserve raising the interest rates. Now, one of the things talked about is obviously how the economy is going to be destroyed because it is planned to do that. That's how you would take over. And so yeah. uh, with that, just from your like your take, what do you see happening with that going forward? Yeah, it's definitely, this whole thing, it seems like a script, man. It seems like if you look at any parasite life cycle, it's all in a loop. You know, parasites don't, like, create new trajectories. They just create, they just keep the, the host in a loop. And so I think that that's, that's kind of where it's at. Like, there's probably, like, a 2,000-year loop that just keeps replaying. And some people get wind of it, get some information, or they remember themselves enough to where they kind of remember what happened before. And um, I think the Bible is kind of like the matrix in a sense, like where, you know, you behold a pale horse, like you said, it's from the Bible, the, the scripture. And the first horse comes with pestilence. The white horse comes with pestilence. And it says in Greek, if you read it in Greek, it says like, you know, the horseman comes with a crown, but it doesn't say crown in Greek. It's Corona is Greek. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So I feel like, you know, it makes sense that, you know, we're just in the opening act at this point. And it's just it's just part of the, the whole loop. And people are running on scripts, scripture. And, and the Bible is pretty much like a code that's ingrained in a bunch of people. And um, people are really the care. I think, I think a lot of people are just the characters from the Bible, you know, one way or another. It's the Samsons and Delilahs and 
you know, you got you, you know, Jacob and um and his twin brother and or Esau Esau and Jacob or whatever. All of that I feel like it's playing out and it just it plays out for eternity or infinity, not eternity. It plays out for infinity in this loop. I feel like it's a true story, the Bible. Like you have your thousand year jubilee when the aboriginals take over and they get the world back. The people with the birthright get the world back for a thousand years and then the, you know, that's that's what, you know, I guess would be the end of Revelations after uh, the parasite or the dragon or whatever is slayed and banished back into its corner. But I feel like it take probably about a thousand years probably till it starts to consume um, probably just one individual and then eventually just spread and spread and spread through rape and rape sex and through just passing the uh, microbes and stuff. So I feel like the par you know, the devil or the beast that's from Revelations is just a parasite that grows in the species. And it takes about 2,000 years or so for it to reach a climax. And then you get Revelations. And I, I feel like it's almost just like a season. It's not like anything. It's like almost like a play. You know, you get your play bill. And you're like, oh, this is the next scene. 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 I, I feel like it's it's all just, yeah, it's all scripture. It's all scripted. And it's in people's blood, you know, people have the codes in their blood. And um, a lot of people are graphs, you know, they're not rooted in this reality, they're just a graft. You know, how, like you can take you can take a branch off a peach tree and graft it to another tree, and it'll just still grow peaches, but it don't have no roots. So right. I feel like that I feel like that's pretty much where we're at, like you got a bunch of graphs that have this code, they follow this scripture, and then it, it, it makes the the whole biblical prophecy play out. And I think, yeah, they just were in a big 2000 year loop. Everybody's in their own little personal loops and maybe 600 years to a thousand years. And it, the whole goal of the parasite is just to keep everybody so distracted that they don't realize themselves to break the loops. So they, everything just keeps playing out. And most people are thinking that they're doing things to change things, but then they probably, by the, by the time they get to the end of their life, it just restarts the loop. And, you know, I think that's, I think a lot of people are in that place. Um, you know, I think it's just, I think it's just really parasites, man. I feel like it's one parasite. I really don't feel like it's two. I feel like it's one that's, and then you got to do like underlings. Cause like a parasite doesn't know it's a parasite. Cause as soon as it knows it's a parasite, then it ruins, you know, ruins the situation. You know, if you're a host and you're an oblivious host, then the parasite can just keep riding you for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. True. But if you don't know, then, you're just a great host, and I feel like that's where a lot of the un due to underlings are, you know, the people that don't know themselves enough to see beyond the loop, so they just keep playing it out, and they just keep contributing to the same outcomes. I feel like, you know... Um, what you just it, said it, reminds me of, like, the Matrix, in a sense, like, where the people who are aware would be considered, like, Morpheus and Neo who wake up from that Matrix, and all the others are the ones that could be taken over by a parasite, such as Mr. Smith, and you know he just taking over everybody because they're unaware. They're just trapped in the matrix. So in this case, you know we see this. You know I hear a lot of this stuff about how we live in assimilation, and, and at this point, pretty much what you're saying, this is what re what it reminds me of, is it's it is it's almost like an endless simulation until you can get it right. You know because we have yeah. seen this in history over and over and over again. Um, it seems like a failsafe. It yeah. seems like to protect, to keep the environment to like, it's like, it's bound by laws. Like, it's a game. It's like a game. Like, you have a basketball court, it's 94 feet. You got a football field, it's 100 feet and 53 and a third yards wide. I mean, 100, 100 yards long and 53 and a third yards wide or whatever. You're within the boundary of the laws of the game. And I feel like when people do certain things, it's, it, it, it's not, it's nothing new under the sun. So, like, when people engage in parasitic activity and not being themselves, then it's just like, a failsafe that keeps you almost like keeps everybody locked in the same loop until they realize until they get out of the loop and then they can return to like an inter eternal trajectory and move on to the next level of the game. I think it's definitely that's a great way to look at it. They are living in these cycles. I mean, I think after they did the whole shutdown when they had the writer strike, what was that, 2007? Yeah. It's just, like it's just a vast wasteland of just emptiness. <laughs> nothing like nothing new just nothing enlightening just limbo mm -hmm. that's why it feels like it still feels like oh the 90s was you know this long ago the 2000 was yeah. 
recent because they 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 really mess with time too. I feel like. Yeah, definitely. I, I think um, I think it's there's definitely uh, a lot. I've been told, you know, that if it's, it's everything's a thousand years back, it's really twelve hundred. Uh, 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 it's a uh, a thousand twenty two, not two thousand twenty two. Yeah, I've heard you know there's that. You know, is, Islam has a different calendar. Um, everything, everybody's everybody's kind of in different time. So I I don't think that's far fetched to think that it's like on purpose. Yeah, I'm just happy. Yeah. We can choose our own timelines. Hopefully, <laughs> they're ramping up. Sorry, yeah. jump. Let me jump ship and go on the freedom time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like the collective has already invested so much into the unconsciousness that's like, oh man, this is gonna play out. Like, I don't think I don't think that we can really stop it. To be honest with you, I don't think I think there's just too many people that have invested in it. But it's kind of like, you know, just like a way woo way thing like you know just let people kill themselves because i think that's what's going to happen i feel like either either the fentanyl is going to kill you mm -hmm. the, the uh i don't want to say it you know the, the stabby yeah. is going to kill you the stab. um <laughs> yeah 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 the stab. Yeah. i think i think people are just going to take themselves out and then the aboriginals will get the light the land back and then the parasite will just probably infect one person and then it just creep back into the same loop i feel like you know, I, I've been told that um, you're going to have a lot of males die off, the ones that got the stab. They're going to die off, and then it'll be a bunch of women, and they'll get art artificial insemination because there's, there's more sperm in the sperm banks than ever would need it, be, would ever be needed. So, like, I, I, you know, that's what I've been told is that the males would be a mass die off of males, not all of them, but a lot of them. I mean, and then the women will get artificial. Most of them are out here with such feminine energy. I'm in LA. It's like, ooh, you go up to the bay. Oh God, like yeah. they're not even. Yeah. They're males anatomically, but. <laughs> but that goes that goes back into the depopulation control aspect of everything. This is a push that they want to do. I mean, you've never. I mean, look, Bill Cooper. I think in '96 is when that lect lecture was that I saw. He talks about this is why they they don't you know they want to destroy the family and why they they encourage homosexuality. We've never seen that push like we have in the last couple of years. Never in our lives have we seen that. I don't remember seeing that. So yeah, yeah. If nothing you're seeing is a coincidence. A good thing that you said too, Taylor, was when uh, you said scripture. You know, in that within that word is script. It is scripted. Everything we're seeing. I mean, if this book could have been published before i was born then and it's all playing out exactly then that means that it was scripted to happen when we watch tv which is nothing but propaganda you know the news whatever you want to call it but propaganda we are watching actors so when we had matthew mcconaughey get up there and talk about how they need to do something about guns who took him seriously like who literally was was watching him and going, you know, he's right, and I feel his passion. Is this dude gets paid to act? He gets paid millions of dollars to act on screen, and so if you don't think that Joe Biden gets up there and and, and doesn't act, or Kamala Harris gets up there and doesn't act, you know, all these politicians get up there and don't act in front of you, then something is seriously wrong with you because we spend so much time watching movies that if we can't see through the fake shit, then we're never gonna get it. They stole the uh, the Matrix and Terminator series from this woman. Oh yeah, created it. Um, yeah, so they didn't even come up with it at all. Like they knew they stole it. You know. Um, yeah. I I just think that during this time period, everybody's gonna be exposed. Um, I mean, I talk to people and see people, and most people are really just scared to death of what's going on. You know, they they're trying to cover it up with partying and you know, acting oblivious to it and, you know, all this stuff. But most people I talk to, when I even go below the surface just a little bit, I can see it in their eyes. Like, they just don't want this to be true. They're, they're, it's almost like they're clinging on to 2019 to go back to normal. And then it's also uh, afraid of an uncertain doom that's coming in a few years. So it's kind of like most people are going to just dig a deeper hole. They're going to hide. Like, it's just is what it is. Um, I don't know if it's the parasites or the infected, but what I see is just most people are just cowards. 
and and it's just that that's all because when they started wanting to give the kids the staff, I'm like nobody put their foot down. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like these people, these are children. Like nobody. And then after you don't stick up for the children with the staff, you turn around and say, okay, let's have abortions. Like it's crazy. So I just think folks just cowards, man. I mean, and, and to me, I never would have saw none of this stuff had this stuff never happened though. So I can't say it's all a curse. It's a blessing in it too, because a lot of people are waking up at least to see what's going on. At least I guess you say break the cycle, break the loop. So it, it is a good time to be alive, but it's also a character of building time as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely want to break the loop so that you can move on from this level of the game. <clears throat> you know, I feel like yeah. I feel like there's so many other levels to explore and the parasites just trying to keep as many souls here as possible. And I don't think there's any new souls coming in. I feel like souls are like, no, nah, I'm not coming into this <laughs> because it's so much recidivism that, you know, it, it just keeps looping and there's no, it would be no point. Like she said, there's no creation at this point. Parasites can only mimic and flip. So, you know, they just flip the words, change the meaning, or you know, they can't create nothing. So they just flip and, and that's it. They just mimic and flip. That's all they do. So I, I think that we're at that point now where it's, it's reached that threshold where there's just so much stagnation. And, if, you know, the body's mostly water, so... You look at it like parasites thrive in stagnant water. So, like, where, wherever there's stagnation, you're going to have parasites. And creatively, however, it's, 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 just, it's just reached that stage. You look at anything, it, when it gets overly masculine or overly feminine, it stagnates. And then you have parasites taking over. So that's where I feel like you got the tranny agenda and transhumanism coming. And I feel like it's just it's all due to stagnation. There's no more creation at this point. Like, we've... There's no more souls coming in. I feel like it's all just, it's all beings. They're beings still, but they're not souls. That's true. And yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you about the souls and the people being just like bodies. Because even the Gnostics, um, they were this cult, um, like mystery school, like in Egypt and things like that. The Gnostics, um, they talked about how there was a whole bunch of artificial beings coming into the planet. They were like, these people aren't human. They're like, there's no soul in them. And I can see it myself. You know, you look inside people and you just look at them and it's like, there's nothing there. There's nothing, yeah. there's nothing to latch on to. There's nothing for me to like resonate with them. So I just know they're just, there's nothing. You know, people ask me, how do you live in LA? How do you handle it? How do you hear around these people? I'm like, I don't associate with the dead, which is how <laughs> I don't, I can't. <laughs> No amount of facade, unless I'm getting a check from them, I can't associate with that. I completely surround myself with people who are at least do not do not act like slaves. Because if you act like a slave, guess what? You're going to be a slave. So if you want to break a loop, don't let these people drag you down in their energetic field because you're they're going to drag you down. It takes a lot of energy and unfortunately, well, fortunately, we don't practice the satanic stuff that they do, where they cultivate all this extra energy from torture. So whatever energy we have that we can raise in this, like, dimension, you know, you got to make sure you protect it. Because there's not enough. We don't, we don't have enough of the, of the right kind of energy. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys kind of talking about more beyond of what was in the book what are your thoughts and theories of how you guys connect things which is interesting yeah of what um you know there's you know there's two sides to it of people saying like um you know being being logical and not having feelings but <clears throat> you also everybody has feelings we are human that's what makes us different from all the ai that's going to be running the ro the world in my opinion so um uh, and when, you know, you talk about being able to see the truth, I think that, you know, from a biblical perspective, even someone that doesn't, you know, has not read the entire Bible and things like that, um, that it gets a lot of slack for, okay, because you're coming from a quote unquote Christian 
perspective. Um, but even if you took Christianity out of it, that label of it, you would still be able to, um, you can still really see the truth based on that information. You should, you can see the difference between what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's evil. So for all the people that, you know, maybe don't, haven't found their identity in Christ yet, um, you know, well, one, I encourage you to find your identity in Christ. That way you cannot be so manipulated um, for for this propaganda to tell you who you are and how you should, quote unquote, feel about things um, that, uh, you know, fi finding your identity and being able to see the truth is is so absolutely important. And so even if you can't identify uh, with Christ having that that moral ground, um, the thing is, if you're not rooted in something, you're going to fall for what the propaganda tells you to. You're going to you're going to be controlled by that way. And uh, if you're if you're rooted in faith, um, I believe that you're far less likely to be controlled. And well, it's funny because the book was talking about um, basically them being against Christians, um, communists being against God. Like, yeah, the, the book is really heavily centered around. I tell people this all the time. Even if you don't believe in any of this stuff, these people believe in this like they believe it like the people that's pulling the strings believe it so whether you believe it or not really doesn't matter because the people pulling it behind the curtain believe all kind of stuff we're talking about alien we're talking about satan we're talking about everything they believe it so you have to find something to believe in or you're gonna give up i just believe that most people if, if you tell me there's no afterlife there's no heaven there's no hell there's no nothing then what would be the point in fighting like, what would be the point in us doing any of this if there's nothing after this? What, what am I, I mean, what am I trying to, what am I doing? Just take me now. Like, you know. Yeah. Put me into To add on to that, Lance, too, real quick, is that Bill Cooper talked about that. He said that what they want to get you to believe is that there is nothing after this. He wants you to believe that shit. He, uh, or they do. Because if you can, if you believe that, then you feel like, well, you know, that, there is nothing like there's, you know, there's no point in, in me doing anything. There's nothing to look forward to. So they lie about that. They lie about everything. That is a, a way of just using propaganda. And, you know, that was my point of breaking that down with Adolf and, and, and Marx, because everything that we've seen from this point has been propaganda. To deem Osama bin Laden as, you know, this terrorist, Bill Cooper said that they're, if they're going to blame it on Osama bin Laden, he said, don't believe it. He said, don't you believe it? Because he knew what their plans were. So everything that we're seeing from this point, point on is going to be propaganda. We saw the major propaganda with the stabby stabby because they want to get a certain amount of people injected. It's just that simple. Yeah. So they're going to push propaganda for that. They're going to push propaganda for the homosexual agenda. They're, they're, everything they're doing is propaganda. There's no news anymore. We are the news. So with that being said is, for people who, you know, unfortunately, we have cell phones, we have computers, we're always going to be kind of bombarded with that shit. But just don't pay attention, like, to any of that. Like, we, everything going on with Russia, Ukraine. Bill Cooper also talked about Russia was never our enemy. And I'll probably create, I'll probably put a clip of that, too. But he said Russia has never been our enemy. They've always been our ally. So when you've seen Trump with Putin, and, of course, they tried to make it seem like, you know, they were these bad guys because everything is reversed with them. Everything that's good is bad. Everything that's bad is good. So um, Russia, according to that, is not not the enemy, not the bad guy. But, of course, if you do go look at Ukraine, there ain't nothing but Nazis over there, like real legit Nazis. You know, this is easy stuff that you can find, too. So, you know, who's lying and who's telling the truth? Well, I'll go back to that's why it's so important to be rooted in the truth of the Bible, because... <clears throat> that'll very quickly teach you to not get wrapped up in in the propaganda. You have to see things for what they are and and know the truth about what is after this. What should you really be focused on? And I'm not saying not to pay attention to any of these things because, um, you know, if, if you're spending time in prayer, if you're asking for the answer, God is going to reveal the truth to you. Um, but just because because I feel God 
revealed the truth to me does not mean that anyone else is going to accept it because I believe it came from God. Somebody commented, the Bible tells us to be uh, not to be moved by feelings, which I understand that aspect of it. But nevertheless, we do have feelings and emotions. The thing is, the Bible is talking about is to not be controlled by that. They're not saying to just be cold to the world and to not have feelings either so um you know i'm sorry if that was a little bit taken out of context when um i want to go back to what is america and the fact that we have two united states of america um i i felt was really important um and then just going going from that point and talking about the truth is that when you do spread the truth it needs to be documented truth so we can we can circle all the theories of how you know where there's the empty vessels and people putting souls and things like that because i too have thought those things i said you know what because because we were told that there's only going to be um what is it 144,000 that maybe there are we're the same kind of recycled souls because no one is going to heaven until judgment day and so i th i've thought that myself um I'm going back to the two Americas and a lot of people just continuously asking what is the solution um, for the dilemma that we're in and it's two answers is one is find your identity in Christ so you can't be tricked and two is to become um, a sovereign person to um, to release yourself from the corporation of the United States, I believe would be the best answer. And if people were doing that in, in droves, because that information is out there to tell you how to do it, um, it's not as difficult as people make it seem. Um, for all the stories that you see of people saying that they're, um, you know, a sovereign, a sovereign from the United States and things like that and running into problems, you have to understand that that too is part of the propaganda. The problem is always going to be what's popular to deter you from taking action to actually free yourself. A lot of people don't know that there's two United States of America. A lot of people don't know about um, the Constitution being suspended um, many years ago. Uh, but but that information is out there, and any good truther is going to tell you to go do your own research. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I think they sold the country back to England like in seventeen eighty one. I think five years after the um, independence of America, it got sold right back to England. So we, you know, we we've never truly been like the idea of America has really been an idea. We weren't America has. Mm -hmm. America for that long. But the difference is people have believed in the illusion to the point where they'll fight for it. Most other people aren't going to fight for the illusion. We'll actually fight for the illusion of freedom, you know what I'm saying? And we'll actually risk it all to do it. So I think to me, that's the difference. I think the spirit of America is real. Now, whether it's, you know, yeah. in another sense, you know, on paper, but the spirit of the American person is the threat to this new world order great reset because the they can't have this agenda if americans are still here because you there's always someone to look at as hope you know so they they would have to get rid of every american that would dare to say i'm not having it like it's just what it is that's why when he says don't be at home on the holidays it makes sense because they would have to do something very strategic and at one time because you couldn't do it and fail or miss this many or do that because you're going to create uh you know a whole different type of war so yeah i just think that the spirit of america is very real and, and i think that the spirit of america to me is is divine and godly the spirit of america now the country is actually cor obviously corrupt but what america stands for in the hearts of people is to me something that's godly because most americans won't want to be free you know what I'm saying? They want to actually enjoy what God gave us on this earth. So I just think that we're the, we're the greatest threat on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, to to be a free person is, is so important. Oh, no. Yeah, I agree. That's why they also, they're attacking white people so much. Because white people, there's the, that's the last group they need to take care of and subjugate. Because... Well, else has been flattened spiritually and mentally 
I'm glad you brought that up because when we talked about Marxism and Karl Marx and the tactics used there, critical race theory, Black Lives Matter, so on and so forth, um, when you can brainwash black people like that, the next thing to take out would be the white people. Yeah. Because now you've got black people thinking it's white people and it's not. It's, you know what I mean? It's these oh, whole nother group. And you have people turning on each other. Not just that, but in this book as well, Bill Cooper talks about how nationalism is going to be targeted. Mm -hmm. And what you want to be, so you've heard white nationalists before, of course, that doesn't equal racist. That's not what that means. But so you could be a black nationalist, you could be a white, you could be brown, you could be whatever. But nationalism <laughs> is just simply pride in your country, which they want to destroy, period. They don't want you to have pride in your country. They don't want you to be someone who is is like a soldier, so to speak, or a warrior for, you know, someone who has that type of pride um, for your freedom. They want you to hate your country. Mm -hmm. That's how they take you over. I'm just glad they haven't been able to corrupt um, the word patriot. Like, they haven't really been able to do that. Because if you look like the sovereign citizen word, nationalist, that's all, that's, that's down the drain. Like, as soon as you say that word, people are triggered. But patriot, they haven't really been able to associate it or demonize it fully yet. Oh, they're trying because yeah. they just had, what is it called? Patriot pride or something? Yeah. The feds that got arrested? Yeah. The sovereign citizen thing, they took that out a long time ago. Like, now it's, it's a joke if you say that. But honestly, that's what you should want to be. You should want to be sovereign instead of a serf. But Everyone wants to, be, uh, wants to identify as something. So I remember when we had a live Blanche and we had somebody who was on talking about, like, being a moor or something like that. And I'm like, that, that shit does not matter <laughs> at all. I'm like, they don't care what you are. They don't care what you identify as. That is, that is a, such a minuscule problem. That means nothing. And so when they have people focus on stuff like that, that is just so like when you die, what are you? You're not going to be any of right. that shit that you think you identify as. So it really doesn't matter at all. So they, they hate everybody. And then you're sitting here wanting everybody to like you. It's like, relax, understand the tactics that the enemy uses, because this is one of them. And then you can, you know, you can move forward, but we can't do that because they still got people arguing over the dumbest shit. They got people arguing over who's black, who's white, um, who wants to, who's pro-choice, who's pro-life, who's, it's like, this is the dumbest shit that we could possibly be focused on. And, you know, I would encourage that people don't focus on any of it. You know, turn, turn the TV off, turn the news notifications on your phone off. All this stuff does not matter. Because at the end of the day, when you lose your life, this physical life, what color your skin was is not going to matter. I just want to know, oh. January 6th does matter. I got into a huge argument. About that. <laughs> that was as I was telling I was like, so when you don't have power this winter, are you really going to be worried about who sat at Nancy Pelosi's desk? And they were like, <laughs> that's no, that's a great point. That's, that is a great point because people don't understand that's coming. And that's my point. It's just like, you know, you have, they were doing the whole Black Lives Matter and, you know, oh, it's only when, you know, a white person kills a black person. And it's just like, dude, I'm not worried about white people. I'm just not. That is not something that I leave my house worried about. I'm like, now, I'll tell you right now, I, I work security. I work security in an area that a couple of years ago was really bad. Now it's getting a little more gentrified, but nonetheless, you still get those people that, that come around. I'm not armed there because of, uh, you know, the far stuff, I guess you want to you wanna say. Yeah. Now, but I, I was talking to somebody and I said, what would you prefer? Would you prefer me to be armed or unarmed in this fucking area? And they said armed. And I said, exactly. So when you see all this propaganda about take away your guns and you don't need this, and you don't need that. Remember that shit. Remember that you need somebody armed to keep you safe if you're not going to be the one who's armed. Because now it's, if you don't control the guns, who controls them? So in this book, Bill Cooper talks about that. Again, there's literally a whole section about this. He talked about uh, Project <laughs> Orion is what it's apparently called. And that's where they use these drugs 
or whatever uh, for like these youth, which is what we're seeing shooting up the schoolyards, and that Americans will willingly give up their arms. So when I've had conversations with a couple of people over here regurgitating the shit the TV says, talking about, you know, yeah, you know, we don't need an AR and a this and a that. Okay, well, then who does? Because if they take that from you, guess what? Somebody's got them. If, if I go to Blanche and I take, if I take his wallet, guess who has his wallet? Not him. So if someone is controlling something, which is gun control, which has been used by Hitler and all these other communist dictators, when someone controls something, that means that you don't control it. So this is something that only logical people, I guess, understand, because when I've had these conversations, the same thing about abortion and all this with other people, uh, they don't get it. They just sound like the TV to me. So this is a reality that, that we have to deal with. And when you see abortion and they bring up the talking point, for an example, like, well, what if somebody got raped, which is such a very, very, very small um, portion of what happens when it comes to abortions. If you don't understand Planned Parenthood, who created that, started that, the people behind that, what that's used for, and you're just over here regurgitating the shit on the TV, these are the NPCs that we were talking about. These are the parasite people that we were talking about. The people that get taken over by Mr. Smith and the Matrix, because we share, unfortunately, a planet, if we're even on one, who knows at this point. We share this space with people who are just far gone. It's, it's, that's, just, that's just pretty much how it is. So if you can come to that understanding, then you can move forward. If you can come to the understanding that, hey, some people eat meat, some people don't, the people who eat meat are probably going to be a lot sicker than the people who don't. Just come to that, just come to that conclusion and move forward. I'm trying to come to the conclusion yeah. of how we can start using these people. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, because they, they're they going to get used regardless. Like, they're going to get Like, so, I mean. Well, yeah, but we, we see who's using them. They're being used by yeah. the other side. Can I get some of that psychic energy fuel? I just think it's just very hypocritical. Somebody mentioned in the comments, they just sent a billion dollars in military aid to Ukraine, and they're to telling Ukraine. you they don't want you to have a. You know, you know how insane that sounds. You don't want me to have a gun, but you're sending a billion dollars worth of military. <laughs> it's nuts. And in the book, there's more he goes into, but I just kind of stuck to some of these. But um, there's the Bilderberg Group, which pretty sure a lot of people should know about. Uh, they have the Bilderberg meetings. They meet in secret, and they discuss what is going to happen to us and the planet or whatever, basically. The S Supreme World Council of Freemasonry, that's what the Bilderberg Group is. So they're all Freemasons, um, and it consists of 39 permanent members. So they've been around for pretty much however, I think it might have been the 50s or 40s or something like that is when that was around. So they've been around for a while. Now, the Federal Reserve which is a private corporation, which we've talked about, which when Taylor was on, you know, we talked about the Federal Reserve raising the interest rates. And that is, if you kind of don't understand Federal Reserve, basic, basic information you need is just that it's not part of the United States. It is a private corporation, straight up. So it's just like as if you have your family, somebody else who's not in your family is dictating what happens in your family. It's pretty much like that. So it's owned and operated by world bankers, and it's designed to destroy the United States economy, which we've seen. So by doing this, it is going to help to destroy the economy. They're saying it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow inflation or whatever. That's not how it works. That doesn't work like that. One way that Bill Cooper said to that we can actually fix this problem because we're in a, just an outlandish amount of debt forever, pretty much, <clears throat> to this corporation is to nationalize federal, the Federal Reserve. When we're talking about nationalism and being nationalist, that's, that is having control of your country. Your country having control over certain things is putting, putting the power back into your hands. So Roe v. Wade being overturned is getting rid of the federalization of abortion. But a lot of people don't understand that because they watch too much television 
and the television is telling you freedom of choice. But if you literally Google this, you will see that it says Roe v. Wade is, is federalizing abortion. That's what that did. So the reason why they, the Democrats are so mad is because they want everything federalized because that means government control. That means that they oversee everything in the United States, basically, which that means your sovereignty is gone. And that's not what you want. So nationalizing the Federal Reserve is what we would want to do. That is something that we can do as a people and um, printing constitutional money, because right now, obviously, we have Federal Reserve notes, which don't mean shit. There's it has no value to it. So that's also important. Those are two things to look into as to what can be done. Also locking up the criminals, of course, because that's exactly what they are. Now, he also talks about um, the round table of nine, which is just basically the nine most powerful banking families. And underneath the round table of nine, uh, there is the Bilderbergers. So that's the Bilderberg group. And beneath the Bilderbergers, each nation has its own group. Most of the European nations uh, look to the Club of Rome. If you look up Club of Rome on Google, and you go to their website, just it might as well be World Economic Forum, globalization. It's all, the, the, that's pretty much what they are. Same people. In the United States, it's the Council of Foreign Relations. And in the recent years, uh, it's been the Trilateral, uh, Trilateral Commission. So if you look those up too, it's the same people. You got the Rockefellers behind that. It's the same people, basically. Uh, the, trilateral, the Trilateral Commission branched off from the Council of Foreign Relations just to be kind of like a backup, basically, so that, you know, it wouldn't lose political power at all. And these types of branches is what makes up the military industrial complex, which is what Eisenhower warned about. So he warned about the military industrial complex. And that's pretty much what these people are. So what is the military industrial complex? The Council of Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission control the board of directors. So when you start getting into a lot of the deeper stuff and, you know, everyone understands that a lot of these people, especially like on TV and all this, are controlled. Like this is what we start to talk about. This is who controls them. So they control the board of directors. They control the majority of the stock. Usually, uh, like the president and the, C and the CEO of all the major corporations that you've seen, they're all owned by these conglomerates, quote unquote, major publishing, all that stuff. That's all controlled by them. The Council of Foreign Relations, the members own majority of stock of the board uh, of directors. And when you start getting to all these different levels, they're all controlled. So... Why that's important, instead of just saying it, just saying, hey, these people are controlled, is because you have to understand at what levels of government these people are controlled. So that way, when you, you know, it's more than just about, like, voting, let's just say voting for this person, because we've known for a while a lot of presidents have been on the same damn squad, whether it's been Republican or Democrat, because it's been infiltrated. So if you mm -hmm. don't understand like that, for an example, the executive branch is controlled. They can control that, which we see that with Joe Biden. One of the things that Bill Cooper says is we control the Congress, like as in us, by voting. So the voting for that matters. And we've all, we're already seeing actually a lot of that. A lot of people are talking about this, you know, red tsunami and red wave that's coming. And that's why you've seen a lot of like, let's say, Republicans win at the lower levels but not at the higher level, like presidency, because they've manipulated that. I just want people to know that, you know, that is that is part of the part of the trek. What you can do is get find out who is an authentic person who is running. You have to be involved from the jump because the people that are already in office and the people that are controlled are going to be backed by a lot of dollars. And they'll tell you, oh, the race is between these two people when really there's another five or six or eight people that's in the race. You have to do your due diligence and stop expecting people to hand you the answers. Go look.
Go look. If you're tired of the way that things are, go look. You might not be able to change the master plan here or some evil corporation there or whatever it is, but you can start simply in your own house, in your own town, you can make a difference. And I know that 100% because that's what I've been doing for the past five years is making a difference in my own town where we lacked help from uh, from FEMA, from the government, and all this other stuff with disasters going on, when we wanted to bring um, information about human trafficking and how, um, you know, we're so close to interstate, if you get kidnapped here, you can be in another state and at the port um, of either the port of New Orleans in 10 minutes, you can be um, out of the port in Mississippi in 45 minutes. It's not that far away. Um, stop waiting for someone to on the internet to tell you what to do. You're a smart person. Everybody that's listening, you are smart individuals. It doesn't matter what you look like, if your hair is done, what color you are, none of that shit matters. What matters is where you are. And if everybody put that same energy into where they are, things would definitely change. You can take back your control. You can give affidavits to the people. You can collect bonds on the people that are corrupt and running your city. You can do all of those things. I do want to bring up, um, you know, I don't know if, uh, if the perfect drug is in here, but she's going to laugh at me for saying Telegram is a place where you can really speak freely. Um, this man, Dave, I call him Constitution Dave, he teaches people how to form an assembly and how to become a free person. He knows um, he can help you with affidavits on, you know, changing things in your own town. You only need two or more people, and he will come to you and help you form assemblies in your town. Mm -hmm. And so you probably know a friend in the town right next to you, and if that person is interested, they can get up a friend, and he can go to the next town and help you form an assembly to make a real difference. Um, the link to my Telegram channel is in my bio. If anybody wants that, Dave comes on my channel and speaks quite frequently. I just recently posted a chat um, that we did with him this past weekend, and I will be happy to connect you with him so you can make a difference. Um, we know that a lot of the things that Bill Cooper talked about are going to have already come to fruition and will continue to come to fruition, but it's not just enough to say, I know, I know. It, it doesn't matter if you know if you don't have any action behind it. And so I definitely wanted to encourage people to do that. Bill Cooper also encouraged people to do that. He was talking about, um, you know, starting your own um, radio show and sharing information with people and things like that. And yes, you cannot really do it on this kind of platform. But I want to remind you, there's a whole world outside of the Internet. You have neighbors. You have friends. You see people at the gas station, the grocery store, all of these other places. You can go and and talk to people about making a change, about forming an assembly and making a change. It's okay if I lost you at voting. You don't have to vote. But when you don't vote, you also lose the right to complain about what is going on. You don't take any actions. It's about more than just voting, not getting out that one day and placing a vote. You have to know your candidates and the people that don't have big money backing them. It's up to you to share their information with people at the grocery store, with people at the gas station, on your social media. Th those are the things that bring about change. I don't think that we can look at any rev revolutionary person in history from Jesus to Martin Luther King and all, you know, anybody else that you've ever looked up to. It takes a lot of balls to stand up and tell people the truth. Don't sit on that information. Um, a lot of people are scared to speak up because they're scared of prosecution. The Bible says that's going to happen too. Yeah, yeah. That's going to happen too. And so, at the end, at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you know, what what do you want to be known for? That you worked a nine to five job, or that you started your own hair or nail business? Wonderful. Don't be afraid by doing these things, he said. But you're going to end up on someone's list, and he said you're already on their list. And if you yep. live your life like, I remember Malcolm X said that. Malcolm X said, I live like a man who's already died. And you have to, I feel like, take in that energy with this. Because it's one thing to talk about 
I love my freedom. I love America, blah, 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 but not embody that, you know, because yeah. there's people who are no longer here with us, like my mom, which is one of the, the fires that got lit under me to really, really go hard at doing all of this, that is not going to be able to, to, to she, she's not breathing no more. So these people who are no longer breathing, who, you know, whether they were taken out, whether they died peacefully, whatever the case may be, we are now here on this, in this realm, carrying the torch for the people who died for our freedom, who died for us to be able to even have a voice, who've given birth to us, who've given food and shelter to us. And what are we going to do with, with, with that? We're just going to throw it all away because we want to sit down and hope that somebody else can be the savior. Somebody in the comments said something about, you know, I like Trump, but I just don't think he's, you know, basically like our savior. He's not. The whole point is yeah. Trump was there to be an image for you to be your own damn savior. There's nowhere where it says somebody so. else is going to be that for you. You have to be that. Mm -hmm. So don't wait for a Malcolm X to be a Malcolm X. Don't wait for a Jesus to be a Jesus. Don't wait for all this other stuff. If you sit down and do nothing, nothing gets done. I've realized that in my own life without having my mom like around who I used to do so much stuff with that I have to do literally every, every single thing by myself. I don't have help. I don't have a partner. I don't have none of that. So understand that you're going through life solo like that. Now you can have people like we are here together, but you don't, you know what I mean? They're not with you every single day. They're not with you in your life. You know, I don't know what the three of the three of you guys have going on tomorrow. Um, I don't even know what I have going on tomorrow, but my point is, is that we are here together to talk about solutions and what we can do and, and spread the information. And that is the important part. And that's why I said before, there should be no infighting about who eats what or who likes what music or none of that. That does, that means nothing at all in, in, in the broader picture. So um, it is important going forward to understand that there are things you can do, but you have to make that step first. And let's be honest. If Malcolm X, Jesus or any figure appeared, y'all wouldn't follow him no way. So what difference do it make? Like you wouldn't listen to him because they all the truth. So I, people always had these, listen, it's excuses. People say, if the whole system is rigged and everything is stacked against you, then what are you going to do? You just tell me you're going to give up. That's what I'm talking about earlier. Like, what are you going to fight for if everything is stacked against you? You're not going to fight. So when people even tell me what not to do, don't do this, don't do that. To me, it's BS. I know deep down inside, you're looking for a way out. You're looking for all these excuses so you can dig that hole deeper, sit there and hide, and then wait for the same savior that you claim don't exist. Because you know in the end, you save the day. Trust me, mm -hmm. in the end. So whether you believe in Jesus or not, I guarantee in the end you're going to be praying to somebody. Because what these folks got planned is sheer death, damnation, and destruction. Yeah, and I always say... Look, I'd rather be taken out at the beginning than <laughs> some somewhere, or 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 being a, a SEX slave somewhere in China. Like this is a real possibility. Like traffic is these people are real. These people are demonic. Like you're gonna. That's why Bill Cooper. I mean, he knew he wasn't gonna go and be arrested because they knew where he was gonna be taken. Thank you. Was not Thanks. there was no going back. Right, right. To have you, there's no yeah. for your spirit in the world right now. Like it's so like just blah. It's like come on now. Like let's have some dignity. Act like do not act like a slave. Have some dignity. Have basic. Like these are basic. Yeah dignity things and that's the problem these people and then the people say don't vote it's like oh wow you figured it out <laughs> okay now what let me now, now on top of that let me tell you who is gonna vote they are the Democrats, they're gonna vote they're gonna vote for themselves they push it non-stop push it because it's not just a physical act it's also a metaphysical act it's a declaration it's you saying on a piece of yeah. paper it's a ritual saying, I do not agree with this. This is what I agree with this. This is what I want to represent. Yep. So 
on every level, there is some action you need to take. Figure it out. But don't just be like, oh, I figure, I, I, it's all a shit. It's, it's two, of, it's two uh, wings on the same bird, okay? And you're sitting there eating that bird. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I don't like, I don't like the, the excuses. Do something. Like, burn the ships. <laughs> Let's well, go. the power is, is in the people. We all we hear that a lot, but it is the truth. And Bill Cooper also mentioned that. And I and the reason why I bring that up and I say that it's important that Bill Cooper mentioned that is because he had access to these documents of what these plans were and what they were going to do. So if he saw that there was no way out of this at all, then he probably would have said it. But that's not what he said. He said there is. But it, it still all comes down to us doing something on our ends about it and not just, you know, obviously listening to our lives and then taking in the information and being like, yeah, that was good. That was cool. Okay. What are you going to do with that information though? You know, cause we, yeah. every time that we, we show our face and we get on this platform, especially we're putting ourselves, our jobs, everything at risk. And yeah. And, and, and yeah, his case, action. He put his life at risk to to put out what he put out and had and we're here talking about this based around this book. But had he not existed, then would we even know what we know? Exactly. Right. They're just going to counter the votes or rig the election. OK, then go out there and start mind controlling all these NPCs. So they become moral individuals who will not allow, because you can't, you can't exist in a condition if you don't allow it. Like, you can't be a slave if you don't act like a slave. So if everybody just stops acting like this, like even in San Francisco, they just recalled one of their DAs. If it was impenetrable, they wouldn't be fighting this hard. <laughs> they wouldn't exactly. need to. They would just turn your phone off and tell you to sit down. They obviously know something you don't. It's accountability. I'm sorry. It's action and it's accountability. So we, you know, this this outside world that that we're living in is even we are being conditioned to not not speak the truth. Um, and then that if we don't speak the truth, that means that we're not holding anyone accountable. Right. Okay. Um, but as people, we are supposed to hold each other accountable. Like, um, you know, if if you're on this live and, and you're telling me all of these things, but then, um, you know, I see you personally and you're doing the opposite of what you say you're about um, or just uh, just ridiculous behavior in general. We're now conditioned to where we can't we feel as though we can't speak up and we can't speak out against something. Um, Blanche does this really nicely when he's like, if you don't say that you're against something then you're consenting to it um yeah. and i always love it when he says that because that's that's so important if you don't speak out if you don't tell the truth if you don't say this behavior is not okay this is not going to be tolerated um you know or let people know when they're messing up if you don't try to start pulling these souls back to the good side, you know, then we, be, then we're in a very uneven battle. I don't think that there is this large majority that's really lost. I think it's media driven and propaganda driven for everything else they do is they take this small minute percentage of the population that has this one problem, this one thing and then they tell everyone about it. If it wasn't for the news, would we know about transgender people? No. Would we know? Would we know about them? Like, what would we know about that? I mean, we've seen cross dressers because that's what they were for the longest time, right? Uh, like our whole lives, we've seen the cross dress. You know, kind of. You see one here, there. I'm in New Orleans, so I've seen a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, but if it wasn't for the news telling you about this small 1% and triggering your emotions. So then you have um, a lot of people, um, which would be similar to me that speaks out. And I'm like, well, you know, if you, if you think that you're a cat when you're really a person, you know, maybe you should get some help. Let's focus on that. Um, you know, as a, as a community, I think again, taking action, you're going to hold people accountable and you will start to develop change for things. But we've let um, the school system raise our children 
and that's for a very long time. The school system, I, I can't say that I'm a product of, of being raised in the school system because I hated school. I hated being there. I knew it was ridiculous the entire time I was there, and I felt like it was a waste of time because um, I never felt like anything was really true. I might not have known what the truth was, but I knew that wasn't it. And so um, it's very difficult now having kids that are in school and not being able to homeschool them. Thankfully, they're in really good schools to where um, they can learn about things like uh, like the two buildings that fell. And then when they're done with that lesson, I could say, well, let me tell you the real story. Or they learn about that thing in the sky and how people were there. Let me tell you the real story. Um, and so, but to me, that's, that's being an involved parent. Even if you can't afford to actually homeschool your children, you could still be honest and truthful uh, with the kids. They need it. Talk about the fact and we really need to start as everybody drilling in to understand that it's not about us. It's about these kids because they are the only thing that's relevant to the new world order right now. We're barely, yeah. we're barely like, they already know we're not going to do anything anyway. So well, I'll do you one better though. I'll do you one better. The kids are us. I mean, you, you're just, it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. You have kids, they have kids, they have kids, they have kids. So what are you leaving them? Are you leaving them to be ran by pedophiles and Satanists? Mm -hmm. I mean, the abortion thing, which I'm going to post about too when I get off of here, is the Satanic temple are for abortion. They, it's, it's a ritual sacrifice that they do. They like abortion. They're behind it. So anything that people who worship the devil are for, you should probably be against. Common sense would tell you to be against that. So they're running a great campaign right now. They're running a great campaign right now. So since all of this abortion stuff has came out, um, the satanic, I'm, I'm not going to call them a church, but the satanic group is running a great campaign to where now you can have religious freedoms if you're part of their um, society. Right. I mean, the, the, the sheeple are just lining up. Just absolutely lining up. And again, you you have no idea what you're consenting to uh, when it comes to abortion and things like that. I think it's a moral issue. And I think that if we were better at talking about morals and we can bring God and faith back, that we wouldn't have such a dilemma. I also, even though, you know, would never in my life have one, uh, it is it is up to people's choice, just like it's your choice in everything else you do in life. My qualm comes with the government being involved. And right. that's where the left will always lose me because their solution is more law more law. You talk about gun control. You have a right to have a gun. It doesn't matter how many laws you make on guns. Criminals don't follow laws. Stop being stupid. They don't follow laws. And the police, we push the police out. We've mistreated them. And so now who is going to help you in, in the event of an emergency? You've literally shot your own foot. You <laughs> shot your own foot. Who's going to come help you when your cousin's high on pills? Just trying to get you. Exactly. <laughs> Did you did you guys see the I'm sorry to distract. Did you guys see the article about Miami having a campaign for uh, buying guns so they could send them to Ukraine? Yeah, I that, saw it. I love that. I love their. their That's got to be part of of the build back better plan. They're sitting. Yeah. And I love the people who are like doing that because they're sitting it so white people for white people to protect themselves. It's like, no, 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 hold on, hold on though. Who's to say they're even sending them to Ukraine? I know. Right. Exactly. Right. They could literally just be pocketing all those. That's a. They're not sending that to Ukraine. Ukraine's done. Ukraine is that's yeah. it's, Ukraine's over with. They're they're just taking your guns. That's all it is. Right. So yeah. you can't you that's know that. you can't fall for that crap any anybody who tells you that oh you know oh it's gonna be to, for good use those are the people that never use stuff for good use anybody that brings their gun to be sent to ukraine with that program i'm gonna say that that's your mental wellness check right there you shouldn't have a fucking gun anyways right i agree disarming liberals <laughs> that's fine i guess it's okay to disarm more liberals <laughs> i just i just so I wanna... exactly maybe maybe there'll be less crimes i don't know 
Um, so I, I want to go over this real quick and then we'll close out and then, you know, we'll uh, we'll talk about doing our part two. But, but hold on, though. But the, the hypocrisy of literally praising the Ukrainians for using guns and then telling us they don't. I'm like, who can y'all see what's really this is, it's baffling my mind. They're literally praising the Ukrainians, citizens for having guns to defend themselves. They're getting praised for it. You really doing vigilante justice, really, because you, Ukraine has a military. So you mean to tell me y'all are encouraging citizens to take matters into their own hands and to go shoot at Russian soldiers, but then you're telling me to give you my gun? No. 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 Really? No. The democracy, their minds are so warped. There's nothing like I remember. America first. I, I Put America first. Something about the, trying to ban ARs, and I literally went the next day and bought one. Like, I, I said, if y'all want to ban ARs, I got to have one. Whatever they want to ban, I want it. That's my oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was that was talked about, though. He said they're going to start taking away certain guns. Bill Cooper, of course. And it's like, yo, you're seeing this. You're seeing this in real time. So, you know, I was talking to somebody about uh, the Uvalde stuff. And then she was like, you know, you know, yeah, you know, it's sad or whatever. And I said, yeah, sure, it's sad. People die in false flag operations. You know, people really die in those, but it's a false flag operation for a reason. Because the bigger picture is to come after your guns and take it. And they know, as we just went over, that when you operate out of emotions and not logic, that it's easy to manipulate you. So yeah. you can't fall for that shit. That's why we've seen so many mass shootings, quote unquote. Um, back to back like that because they go from one thing to another thing abortion was about federalizing abortion that's control of the population then there's about the guns gun control well we already know what gun control is you disarm the people you can control the people joe biden was talking about voting rights and how black people just don't they don't have the right to vote or whatever some bullshit he said that was stupid that was about federalizing elections so everything they're doing is throwing it to the Fed so that they can control America. It's that simple. And that's some of the stuff I'm going to get to, but I wanted to go over a couple of notes real quick that are very, they're quick. They're quick little points that I want to, I want to leave everybody with before we log off. And this is stuff that Bill Cooper had said, or that's in the book. So I'm just going to be reading it off of this. He said that the elites believe that through their technology, okay, because they're technocrats, a uh, man will become God and they will engineer, just like Hitler tried to do, a super race that will live forever. And this is the same men behind it as there were when Hitler was around. So we talked about how they implemented into our government. Their goal to bring about the New World Order and uh, as they solidify their control, everyone will be given a choice and be presented with a one world religion. And I don't know if you guys have seen, but they are actually doing that right now. They're creating okay. a, a one world religion. If they refuse, they will be executed. Okay. So that is also something we see happening. If you're Christian, you will be required to denounce Christ and join the new world religion, which I'm pretty sure anyone who's Christian on here is not going to want to do. So this is another reason why you need your guns. <laughs> federal democracy of the district of columbia okay once again the word federal that's important to understand they fund the congressmen a foreign government funds certain politicians so when you say um yeah you work for me no they don't they do not work for us at all you need to make sure that your money is actually going to these people because they are getting funded by the fed so they don't have to work for you at all. They're going to work for the New World Order. Talks about the war on drugs and how that was created. Uh, that created a police state where without a search warrant or court order, they can confiscate items, your house, your bank accounts, possessions, etc., and auction those off without ever pressing charges. So that gave it a green light to be able to do pretty much whatever they want. So it also goes into when they talk about defunding the police. 
And defunding the police leads to dismantling the police, which we've heard them use before as well, and then federalizing the police, which then creates a police state that is now controlled not by the United States government, but by a foreign government, such as the Fed. So this is also important because we've seen this happen with Black Lives Matter. Due to this is all political movements. You got to understand the Marxism, the tactics Hitler used and all this and everything, all the pieces come together. So he also mentioned how the United States Air Force uniforms have no United States anything on them, basically. And this was back then. So I, I don't know what they look like now. I haven't checked into that, but it's interesting. I want to because I want to see what they look like. He said that the U.S. armed forces did not defeat those behind the Nazi regime, which I believe 100 um, percent. It was allowed to look that way by the mainstream media to make Americans believe that they defeated the Nazis. And the same regime is behind the agendas of play today, which is, as we saw, people like Warner von Braun and these others be implemented into our government. So obviously the Nazis were not fully destroyed at all. Um, the government has been eroding gun rights, which is what we see, and other liberties and freedoms through false flags and staged shootings with crisis actors from companies such as, and you guys can check this out for yourself, www.crisiscast.com. They really have specific actors for this stuff. For this section, and we're pretty much about to wrap up, the Constitution has been taken out of the school books intentionally. Also, I remember not that long ago hearing, probably about a year ago, hearing that they don't, they no longer teach cursive to kids either. And that is not because, you know, apparently they just don't want to. It's because the Constitution is written in cursive. And if you know cursive, you can read it. And they don't even want you to have the ability to read the Constitution. So they're completely taking that away as well. The Rockefeller family owns most of the colleges and textbooks companies, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people knew already. The Federal Reserve is not an agency or a branch of the United States government. And our money is worthless printed paper, which I'm sure everybody on here knows. Um, income taxes get paid to the IRS, which is also not an agency or branch of the United States government. It is an agency of the Federal Reserve. So it is the collection bureau to repay our national debt to those who we've borrowed it from. So we should not be borrowing money anyway as a country. When you get your refund check, it does not come from the money that you've paid in. The United States government has to borrow again from the Federal Reserve to give you your refunds, and we go more into debt. Hey, can Sounds I, fun, doesn't it? I'll say yeah, what, go ahead. Uh, I see it in the comments. Listen. What makes you all assume that the people at the very top don't look like you? It's propaganda to think that everything evil happening on the planet is white people doing it. You don't know who's at the top. You don't know. It could be a council of people. It could be a bunch of aliens. It could be some lizards. Y'all, it's propaganda to think that it's white people doing all this stuff. When I guarantee at the very top, Everybody's up there. Everybody that's white, and they're going to uplift everybody that's wicked and evil. So it's not like you get rid of white people and they elevate great people. No, you get rid of people that's going to fight for the country, and they're going to replace them with demons. That's how it works. So if y'all think it's about race, again, read the book. Read this book to see how much it's not about race. I'm telling you, they don't care. They don't care about your race, your color, your religion. They don't care. They really just want you dead. Because you in the way. Really, they don't yep. care. Y'all really scum of the earth to them. Look at uh, Nancy Pelosi and then Maxine Waters behind her. <laughs> Did you see that clip? Man. <laughs> yeah. Was so she was gone. Like, so that demon, that demon is, is there behind uh, another demon. Right. And she looks like them or us, whatever. So, you know, make that make sense. As if, you know, that's supposed to mean something that somebody shares the same skin tone as you. That's stupid. That's one of the dumbest things. Uh, Layla, were you going to say something? Oh, no, I'm saying, like, look at Africa. Look how it's completely subjugated, 100%, in so many ways. So it makes sense that those same people who run those countries there, wouldn't they be 
running some things, like if that's how they treat it, like if that's their mentality to, you know, create a slave state, why wouldn't they be at the top making slave states all over the world? Right. I'm like, it's just foolish. I'll tell you another thing too, is that, you know, identifying with this color or whatever, identifying really with anything, it, it binds you. It keeps you from moving to another level. Because if you say, you know, well, I, you could be 14 years old and be like, well, I'm only five foot four. Well, you had NBA players like Anthony Davis shoot up to six foot nine. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you label yourself as something, then you're binding yourself. So you don't ever want to get stuck with the whole color crap. That's all a whole nother mind trick. That's dumb. People got to get off of that period because once you stick to that, you can't move. You can't move past that. Now you're basing everything off of what somebody did, looked like. Did, did we cover that we're given an enemy? Maybe that person wasn't here when we covered that we're assigned enemies. All of the people that are running around mad at this one and that one and stuff like that. You are still oblivious to the truth. The propaganda has assigned who you're going to be against. Right. And being against someone because of the color of your skin is about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You think yeah. on Judgment Day, God is going to separate us like laundry? Or is he going to care about how we've lived our lives? No, Let they, me add on to that, too, they, real quick, Katie. That it's, not, it's not the physical that God looks at. It's not the physical at all. So when we identify with the physical in that way, we're, once again, we're binding ourselves. It's, your physical don't go with you. That's why your body ends up yeah. in the ground or burnt. Yeah. You know, or cremated. So it's it's that whole mindset in itself is ridiculous. No, I was saying they I was saying they believe they're gonna get separated, Katie. They believe that. So at the end of the day, I'm trying to tell people <laughs> Well, they're stupid, so the, the people that are in control, <laughs> they don't care about your color. Think about it. Think about everybody that's important in this world. They don't care about your color. The folks in charge don't care about it. God doesn't care about like nobody. You only you only care about race on the bottom level of the game, on the very basic level of this game we're playing called life. The basic level is worrying about somebody's color because you can see it. it, it it's the it's almost the lowest functioning level to exist. They're coming after everybody. Saying well, I read this, I listened to this audio book and. They don't care about none of the stuff, this trivial stuff. We care. Like, they just put this stuff in front of us, and we just scramble and fight over it. And they're literally, I mean, think about it. They're talking about transhumanism. Yeah. You think race is going to matter? When you got to just imagine transhumans protesting. What are they going to be fighting about? Like, what, like what do the transhumans, who are they beefing with? The transhumans <laughs> it's so funny. And you were it's so funny because as you're saying that, I'm thinking in my head, like, I can't believe we're here in the, right now on this timeline. Like, it's <laughs> a trans, trans. <laughs> and you were saying, you could be complaining. Why are we here, bro? You're going to be complaining. What happened? It's to a robot. And they're just going to look at you like. Think about it. It's going to be a, it's going to be a whole bunch of robots. And you're going to say <laughs> that the system is racist. And the robot, <laughs> like, you're insane. Like, what? <laughs> Like, what are we talking about? Uh, look at the venom. <clears throat> Bill Cooper talked about that too. Remember, that's how HIV got around is through the water, mm -hmm. and then now that's the new um, the new theory. But I don't want to really talk about um, theories too much. I do that as a hobby. But <clears throat> when you have an opportunity to speak, we have to speak in fact. So we yeah. are being poisoned from every which yeah. direction you can possibly imagine. So, which is unfortunate, but. Just do the best you can. But that's the thing is we're not meant to stay here forever. It's about the salvation of your soul. Turn away from the devil and, and turn towards God. The right frequency, you can heal yourself if that's really what you need to do. But if you're hanging out with mm. low-level energy beings at the club, you're not going to be able to heal yourself. So Let me finish this up real quick. I'll wrap it up, and then we will uh, and we'll close out. Okay. On, that, on that same note about the Federal Reserve, and all that. 
He said that if we started printing a hundred dollar bills right now, and this is obviously back then, so I'm sure it's a lot different now. With all the money printing presses at our disposal and printed money for 24 hours a day, every day, forever, we could still never pay off the national debt because we cannot print the money fast enough to even catch up with the interest on the unprinted amount. So when we were talking about our children and their futures, that this is pretty much what we're looking at if we don't turn this around, is a forever day, you're forever a slave. Our nation is owned by the European banking interests who own the majority of the stock in the Federal Reserve. So Federal Reserve is one of our main, if not the main enemy of the United States. Because economically, if you're in debt to somebody, like if I owed Blanche $1,500, you know, there's no escaping that. You know, how, how, how do I get 1500 when I got to pay for this, pay for that, and I got, you know, whatever. So it's, it's like, in this case, that debt is, is for like eternity because we've been sold out for so long. So you're never going to be able to repay that debt in our current situation. So that's why Bill Cooper talked about one way to fix this is to nationalize the Federal Reserve, lock up the criminals, print constitutional money, get back on track. This is something that we should be talking about and informing each other on as well, because we see that our economy is being destroyed by Joe Biden. It's not just Joe Biden. Obviously, he's the he's the face. But we'll just say Joe Biden because he is the face. That's who we see. But he is a globalist. He's there. He was literally put in to destroy this country from the inside out. That's what he was there for. Everything that you hear. I mean, this was recently. He's over here talking, and so is his dumbass press secretary, talking about the economy has been in the greatest recovery of who. No one believes that if they, at all. Like I'm like, who they, believes that? Listen, the, listen. These people, I talk to these people. People believe what comes across that. I'm telling you, like it's gospel. They do. It's like, like like it, and I try to. I say you can't see what's going on, and they and they still argue, and they still blame Trump. Do you know? Oh, you he's know? A I was told that yes, the uh, other day he's a misogynist. So they believe uh, everything on that. Team. Yeah, it's because. They believe it. I mean, this is what we talked about with, with the propaganda. The propaganda is is the same propaganda being used by Hitler's regime and by Karl Marx and, and these people. So they the, these dumbasses, like especially like a lot of the younger youth, they watch too much TV. They're too like involved in social media. They have no thought of their own. They're too implemented into culture. And so they don't, they don't, think outside of the box they think whatever is on the tv you know it has to be real it has to be true so we have that issue of a massive brainwashing in this country because if you look outside of the country a lot of people will be like you know that news ain't real or this didn't happen or that didn't happen it's it literally only propaganda look at the news CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, any of these organizations they're all owned by certain people small group of people and what they put out there is what they want to show you it's not what is real or what is true it's just what they want to show you and what you and then what they want you to believe so don't fall for any of that shit that's really like all i can say is don't fall for it. literally the only way to have answers is to do the research yourself that's it yeah. bill cooper talks about this and he says that and this is going to be important because this is kind of like what we just passed was several top secret recommendations were made by a Dr. Aurelio Cassell of the Club of Rome, which we talked about Club of Rome. You guys can Google that and look that, look that up. He advocated that a plague be introduced that would have the same effect as the famous Black Death of history. The chief recommendation was to develop a microbe which would attack the autoimmune system and thus render the, the development of a vaccine impossible. The orders were given to develop the microbe and to develop a prophylactic and a cure. The microbe would be used against the general population and would be introduced by the stabaroo. The prophylactic was to be used by the ruling elite. The cure would be administered to the survivors when it has been decided that enough people have died. 
the cure will be announced as newly developed when in fact if he if has existed from the beginning this part is part of global 2000 which could be i guess similar to like agenda 2030 or 2020 that type of thing um the prophylactic and the cure are suppressed so this all goes into like 2020 and and what happened around that time as well so there's a lot to be digested here but i hope that the people who do get the book or even just listen to the audio book it lights a fire under you because i want people to remember that this man died and however you feel he died whether you thought he was targeted or not the the information that he brought to us at the time that he did and what we're seeing now it just comes into what are you going to do about it and what are you going to do with the information that was given to you that could have never been given to us at all and instead of waiting for a malcolm x martin luther king type of symbol person or a trump be that be that every day and and, and actually make a change it, whether small you know you gotta start out somewhere but what we're doing right now is a good start <laughs>